Chris says, Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium at Earl Campbell Field in the beautiful Rose capital of the world in Tyler, Texas, is our location for today's ball game. Hello, everybody. Welcome back in to Yosemite Roofing Steer Football on ASN2, brought to you by Yosemite Roofing, your goat of roofing. Today's contest is a Sooner Athletic Conference matchup between the 16th ranked in the land, Rams of Texas Wesleyan, led by head coach Joe Prudhomme, ironically a Tyler boy himself, played and coached back in Bishop T.K. Gorman, the home of the Crusaders. We've had them on the Antler Sports Network multiple times. They'll be taking on the hosts of today's game, the Steers of Texas College, led by head coach Jarrell Jackson, former Oklahoma Sooner, still looking to get their first overall and conference win of the season. And what a better way to do that than against one of the best teams in NAIA. This is the East Texas Benefits Countdown to Kickoff. We'll look at some games across the conference that we'll be keeping our eyes on. We'll preview both of these two teams and introduce our starters. All that and more. This is Steer Football presented by Yosemite Roofing on ASN2. We'll be back and continue our pregame coverage after this three-minute timeout. If you or a loved one have multiple daily prescriptions, knowing what to take when can be confusing. This is the Brick Street Daily Dose Packet. That's Brick Street Pharmacy owner Kimberly Abel. All of your medications are going to be in a sleeve of bubbles, telling you what time of day to take them. They're all separated out already. It's in perforated packs, and it's a tear-off system. The Brick Street Pharmacy Daily Dose Pack organizes a month's worth of prescriptions into a single, simple, easy-to-follow package. When you go check on your mom, you're not having to go into her house and back count her vials to find out if she remembered to take her medicine. Saves you an office visit, keeps everybody compliant, you know everything's going well because they're taking all their medication. The Daily Dose Pack is a Brick Street Pharmacy exclusive. It's not available from the chain pharmacy and it doesn't add a penny to the cost of your prescriptions. Brick Street Pharmacy is in Tyler's Azalea District on Rusk, a block and a half west of South Broadway. They're online at BrickStreetMedical.com. BrickStreetMedical.com. perfect insurance plan can seem like a daunting task in this financial climate. Tackle the task with Mike Munn State Farm Insurance. We have a triple threat of home, auto, and life insurance policies to fit any budget. You can even cover your furry friends with pet insurance. Call 903-561-4535 or visit mikemunn.net to get started on a free quote. Call 903-561-4535 to get started on a free quote. Hello, I'm Mike Munn with Mike Munn State Farm, where I've been your local agent since 19... Jared Jones back in the HTO broadcast booth as we continue the East Texas Benefits Countdown to Kickoff, brought to you by East Texas Benefits, local knowledge you can trust. It's Steers and Rams. I call it the I-20 rivalry, at least on social media anyway, between these two Sooner Athletic Conference teams. Texas Wesleyan won the last time these two teams locked horns, no pun intended. The Rams took down the Sears by a score of 40-12. to 12. That was back on October 29th of 2022. And the Rams are looking to expand their all-time head-to-head lead over the Steers. Right now, Texas Wesleyan leads with four wins to one. But ironically enough, Texas College won the very first meeting between both of these two teams. That was back on 
October the 7th of 2017. 2017 here at Christmas Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium by a score of 21 to 11. Ever since then, this series, this series has been all Rams. Texas Wesleyan averaging 43 points per game and only allowing 20 points per game in all five of their all-time matchups against the Steers. And they have the longest win, and they could tie or at least get the record for the longest win streak in program history, the Rams can, with a win today. The Steers going against the 16th team in the land. They're 0-2 against ranked teams this year. Looking to possibly get that back into the win column, at least against these ranked opponents. And what a better way to do so. The Steers haven't won a game of the Sooner Athletic Conference, currently sitting at ninth in the conference. Texas Wesleyan right now, blown team at the top of the conference with five conference wins right below them are the Wildcats of Louisiana Christian. Louisiana Christian, ironically enough, is going to be taking on the Lions of Southwestern Assemblies. Other games in the conference to watch, the Salons of North American will be taking on OPSU, the Aggies, that game at 2 p.m. kick. The Langston Lions will be taking on the Spirit of Ottawa, 2 o'clock kickoff there. In the nightcap, ironically, only one game. Usually the Sooner Athletic Conference this time of year has all their games at 2 o'clock, but the Pioneers of Wayland Baptist, who we saw these Rams defeat, in pretty entertaining fashion, last week on ASN2, the Pioneers will be taking on the Buffaloes of Arkansas Baptist. That game, not a 2 p.m. kick, but a 6 p.m. kick. So, taking another look at the conference standings, Texas Wesleyan, number one. The Wildcats of LCU, Louisiana Christian, number two. Ottawa at third. Langston at fourth. OPSU, Oklahoma Panhandle State, that is, at fifth. Southwestern Assemblies at sixth. Arkansas Baptist, seventh. Wayland Baptist, eighth. And the Steers of Texas College, at the bottom. This is Chris the Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium here in the Rose City. Stadium built back in 1942. Can hold 8,000 fans. Home of the Lions and Red Raiders of Tyler High and Tyler Legacy, respectively. The oldest stadium in Smith County. We'll continue the East Texas Benefits Countdown to kick off by meeting our starters. All that and more after this, after this three-minute timeout. This is Steers and Rams on ASN2. Steer Football presented by Yosemite Roofing. If you or a loved one have multiple daily prescriptions, knowing what to take when can be confusing. This is the Brick Street Daily Dose Packet. That's Brick Street Pharmacy owner Kimberly Abel. All of your medications are going to be in a sleeve of bubbles, telling you what time of day to take them. They're all separated out already. It's in perforated packs, and it's a tear-off system. The Brick Street Pharmacy Daily Dose Pack organizes a month's worth of prescriptions into a single, simple, easy-to-follow package. When you go check on your mom, you're not having to go into her house and back count her vials to find out if she remembered to take her medicine. Saves you an office visit, keeps everybody compliant, you know everything's going well because they're taking all their medication. The Daily Dose Pack is a Brick Street Pharmacy exclusive. It's not available from the chain pharmacy and it doesn't add a penny to the cost of your prescriptions. Brick Street Pharmacy is in Tyler's Azalea District on Rusk, a block and a half west of South Broadway. They're online at BrickStreetMedical.com. BrickStreetMedical.com. Drawing up the perfect insurance plan can seem like a daunting task in this financial climate. 
tackle the task with Mike Munn State Farm Insurance. We have a triple threat of home, auto, and life insurance policies to fit any budget. You can even cover your furry friends with pet insurance. Call 903-561-4535 or visit MikeMunn.net to get started on a free quote. Call 903-561-4535 to get started on a free quote. Hello, I'm Mike Munn with Mike Munn State Farm, where I've been your local agent since 19- 19... As we continue our countdown to kickoff here at the HTO broadcast booth, let's introduce the starting lineup. Starting with the 16th ranked Rams of Texas Wesleyan. Looking at their offense, no Carson Rogers or Ernie Caesar in the starting lineup for the Rams. So that would be Cole Francis getting the signal calling nod here at quarterback. Vernon Harrison, the running back. Caleb McKinney, the tight end. The receiving core, some familiar faces there. Anthony Bob, Terrell Curtis, and Ronnie Schneider round up the receivers. Caden Glasgow, the left tackle. Michael Bonner, left guard. Peters Wobova, ironically the East Texas kid. Graduate of Brook Hill High School over in Bullard. Former guard doing the snapping at center. Mikey Lopez-Williams at right guard. And Ogden Morrison at right tackle. Now flip to the other side, taking a look at the Texas College defense. Tylen Lewis, Travion Talley, Rudy Benavidez, and Martel Jones, the defensive lineman for head coach Jarrell Jackson. Dylan Dubois, Travion Brown, Jalen Smith, and Tyler Sharp, the linebacking core. Three defensive backs the Steers are going to go with. That's EJ Young, Tyler Mitchell, Kendrick Brown those defensive backs. Going to the other side, now to the Texas Wesleyan defense. Dino Marchaschelli, a one-time Sooner Athletic Conference Defensive Player of the Week, a guy that we know who is an absolute game-breaker, begins this defensive line for Wesleyan. Arian Bott also on the defensive line. Sir Hill and Daniel Aji Bogan round out the defensive front. Ashali Cannon, one of the best linebackers in the country, starting off this linebacking core for Wesleyan. Jose Bonilla, Linebacker Javari Sanders, the final linebacker. Since here, Blackman, Nick Williams, Jay Reed, and Dalen Rogers are the defensive backs for the Wesleyan defense. And finally, the steer offense. Biggest question, who's going to take the reins at quarterback? We've seen Terrell Hookfin take snaps. We've seen Roderick Brown take snaps. We've also seen Tyler Jones take snaps. But Tyler Jones, at least as of right now, will be getting the start for the Steers. Alante Brewer, the running back, he's going to be flipping with Winters for that two-headed rushing attack for the Steers. Jalen Jackson, Aaron McClure, and Deontay Hill and Rory Bailey, the receivers. Christopher Norman at left tackle. Ryan Munoz at left guard. Ryan Coker at center. Xavier Williams, right guard. And at right tackle, Jalen Benton. Those are our starting liners presented by Spartan Exteriors, proud sponsor of the Antler Sports Network. We'll take a couple more timeouts. We'll also check out last month's top 10 plays of the month as we get ready for a kickoff between the Rams and the Steers. It's Sooner Athletic Conference action. Steer football presented by Yosemite Roofing continuing after this timeout. If you or a loved one have multiple daily prescriptions, knowing what to take when can be confusing. This is the Brick Street Daily Dose Packet. That's Brick Street Pharmacy owner Kimberly Abel. All of your medications are going to be in a sleeve of bubbles, telling you what time of day to take them. They're all separated out already. It's in perforated packs, and it's a tear-off system. The Brick Street Pharmacy Daily Dose Pack organizes a month's worth of prescriptions into a single, simple, easy-to-follow package. When you go check on your mom, you're not having to go into her house and back count her vials to find out if she remembered to take her medicine. Saves you an office visit, keeps everybody compliant, you know everything's going well because they're taking all their medication. The Daily Dose Pack is a Brick Street Pharmacy exclusive. It's not available from the chain pharmacy and it doesn't add a penny to the cost of your prescriptions. 
Brick Street Pharmacy is in Tyler's Azalea District on Rusk, a block and a half west of South Broadway. They're online at BrickStreetMedical.com. BrickStreetMedical.com. Drawing up the perfect insurance plan can seem like a daunting task in this financial climate. Tackle the task with Mike Munn State Farm Insurance. We have a triple threat of home, auto, and life insurance policies to fit any budget. You can even cover your furry friends with pet insurance. Call 903-561-4535 or visit MikeMunn.net to get started on a free quote. Call 903-561-4535 to get started on a free quote. Hello, I'm Mike Munn with Mike Munn State Farm, where I've been your local agent since 19... 19- as we continue the Youth Texas Benefits Countdown to kick off, let's check out some broadcasts that are coming up along the Antler Sports Network family of platforms. On Monday, for the very first time, the Antler Sports Network will be hosting college basketball for a Division I team, as these same Texas Wesleyan Rams will be heading to Shulmire Arena in Fort Worth for the Funky Town Showdown. The Rams and the TCU Horn Frogs pregame at 6 p.m., tip-off at 7 on ASN Radio and the Antler Sports Network 2 live viewer at antlersn.com forward slash ASN2. Next Friday will be our Texas high school football finale as the Big Sandy Wildcats will be heading up Highway 80 to face the Hawkins Hawks. Kickoff will be at 7 p.m. on ASN1. That'll be a scouting report game of the week. And finally, to round out the college football season next Saturday, the Texas Wesleyan Rams will take on the Louisiana Christian Wildcats in what could be either a battle of ranked teams or maybe even a Sooner Athletic Conference championship game to decide who will take the conference crown. Kickoff from Crowley will be from 2 p.m. Myself and Jamie Christopher will get you ready with pregame at 1.30. But ahead of that contest... James McBride, the SID over at Texas Wesleyan, had a chance to talk with head men's basketball coach of the Rams, Brennan Shingleton, ahead of his matchup with the Horn Frogs of TCU. Hello Ram fans and welcome to the inaugural edition of Meet the Rams Above the Rim. It's going to be a bi-weekly show we're going to do here for you for the men's basketball team to hopefully get to know the coaches and the players a little bit better. Riding shotgun with me over here on my ride every week is going to be head coach of men's basketball, Brennan Shingleton. Brennan, how are you doing today? Great. Good. I just want to start off with you here and uh, why don't you introduce yourself to some of the uh, people out there that might not know who you are. Uh, obviously, Brennan Shingleton. Uh, I am, uh, went to high school here in Fort Worth, played college ball, but down in Louisiana, came back, and uh, I think, if my math is right, I'm entering my 23rd year here at Texas West. Okay. So, yeah, I, you know, I guess you can find the other information online. 
Okay. And then we're going to take this show and we're going to build basically on everything is what my idea is to do here. And I think anything you build, you have to have a foundation before you can build something on top of that. Why don't you tell us what you think the core values are for your men's basketball team? Well, they've changed throughout the years, uh, to be candid with you. Uh, we, we've always wanted guys that wanted to be here, um, that utilize Texas Wesleyan for its strengths, but also the educational piece, uh, the atmosphere in which small college basketball provides us, which is kind of a more hands-on approach. Uh, once our guys get here, we want them to stay. And more importantly, we want to be able to impact their lives. So when we have those core values, it's really just based upon relationships and value and the educational piece. And then more importantly, uh, we want guys that want to win. Then so how would you say tying this into your coaching philosophy? How do your core values go with your coaching philosophy? Uh, my, my personal core values, uh, it tends to just kind of be straightforward. Uh, you know, my idea is show up to work every day, have a plan. Um, I hate wasted opportunities, so, you know, I, I want our guys to really uh, take advantage of that every day and the things that are provided us here. And so obviously, you know, with integrity and work ethic and accountability and all those different cliche words, they come to real life here. But it's, a, it's an evolving process because, you know, like any young coach that gets into the scene, they want to win right away. And it takes time. It's hard to win. And so when you try to establish your core values, sometimes they change uh, until you get a comfortable base of who you really are as a head coach. And then, and then at that point, you really try to elevate every aspect of your program through those values in which you're comfortable coaching. And, I, you know, growing up here in Fort Worth, like you said you did, um, I, I know who your family is just for the simple fact of being a long time Fort Worth resident. It's a totally different path to go into coaching than what your family was. What, what, what made you get into coaching? Well, my dad was in the military for 30 years, and then my mother uh, was a homemaker. Uh, it, it still is. Um, and then my dad was. If you want to check out James and Coach Brennan Shingleton's conversation, you can check it out on Monday as the Rams of Texas Wesleyan take on the TCU Horn Frogs in the Funky Town Showdown on the Antler Sports Network 2 live feed online at antlersn.com forward slash watch. Click the ASN2 tab and the broadcast will be there ready to go. Myself and Jimmy the St. Christopher will be on the call. Tip off from Showmire Arena will be at 7 p.m. Central, pregame at 6 this has been the East Texas Benefits Countdown to kickoff. Both teams are on the field and ready to go, and we're ready as well. We'll take one more final timeout, and when we come back, it's game time. It's Steers and Rams back after this. This is Texas College Tip Football presented by Yosemite Roofing on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2. If you or a loved one have multiple daily prescriptions, knowing what to take when can be confusing. This is the Brick Street Daily Dose Packet. That's Brick Street Pharmacy owner Kimberly Abel. All of your medications are going to be in a sleeve of bubbles, telling you what time of day to take them. They're all separated out already. It's in perforated packs, and it's a tear-off system. The Brick Street Pharmacy Daily Dose Pack organizes a month's worth of prescriptions into a single, simple, easy-to-follow package. When you go check on your mom, you're not 
not having to go into her house and back count her vials to find out if she remembered to take her medicine. Saves you an office visit, keeps everybody compliant, you know everything's going well because they're taking all their medication. The Daily Dose Pack is a Brick Street Pharmacy exclusive. It's not available from the chain pharmacy and it doesn't add a penny to the cost of your prescriptions. Brick Street Pharmacy is in Tyler's Azalea District on Rusk, a block and a half west of South Broadway. They're online at BrickStreetMedical.com. BrickStreetMedical.com. Drawing up the perfect insurance plan can seem like a daunting task in this financial climate. Tackle the task with Mike Munn State Farm Insurance. We have a triple threat of home, auto, and life insurance policies to fit any budget. You can even cover your furry friends with pet insurance. Call 903-561-4535 or visit mikemunn.net to get started on a free quote. Call 903-561-4535 to get started on a free quote. Hello, I'm Mike Munn with Mike Munn State Farm, where I've been your local agent since 19... As the National Anthem concludes, both teams are back onto the field and we're ready for football action. The seniors of Texas College are in their all-purple tops, bottoms, and hats. Texas Wesley and the visiting team in their white tops with navy numerals and lettering across the backs and chest. Navy blue, pan navy blue pants with white trims along the bottoms. Navy helmet with a golden face mask and Willie the Ram and Kristen on both sides of it, said helmet. The, the Rams won the toss and elected to defer to the second half. So the Steers will open up with possession here. Back deep for Texas College is going to be Tyree Lindsey and Tyreek Hastings. Check that. That is number 80, Demantry Williams. Here to do the kicking off for the Rams of Texas Wesleyan. As a leg that we know is one of the most consistent legs in the country, that being Garrett Blodgett. Blodgett, throughout these broadcasts, we've seen him hit kicks from 50, almost 60 yards. He was hitting 61-yard field goals and opening things up. We're ready from Chris Chichini to Mother Francis Rose Stadium. Williams lets it bounce into the end zone, out of bounds. Well, out of play. And Texas College will take over on offense for their opening possession, first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Sears coming to this game after a tough loss to Oklahoma Panhandle State last week. Steers fell on the road by a score of 44 to 32. The Steers on offense have slowly but surely been trying to build that offense up. Every week they have steadily begun to increase their total score. So Opening up now is going to be a new quarterback. Looks like that's going to be Brown to get things going, and it indeed will be. They throw it to the outside to Cooper, and the flat turns. Going to gain a two yards, and that's going to be a completion to get things going for the Steers, is making it second and eight. Derek Cooper, as we know, played defensive back last season for the Steers. Now is the full-time receiver. He's at the bottom of the formation as the Steers look at second and eight. 
Brown in the gun, takes the drop back looking, has a man in the flat, turning to the outside, and he's got space, juking the other direction to the left. Did he get the first down? Yes. Pass is complete into the backfield. Tackle made by the Rams' Josh Morris. And now that'll move the chains. First down in 10. Texas College already getting things going in their first offensive possession. Shotgun snap again. They hit the running back who rolls out and a big time hit. No, he's still up. Needed to hit the ground, but eventually gets brought down. Forward progress is going to give him two yards. Second and eight. As we get another look there with our Circle M Crawfish instant replay. The Rams initially got a hit on him, but the knee did not go down. But thankfully there to clean up the mess for the Rams. It was Vernon Harrison yet again. Here's second and eight yet again for Texas College. Shotgun snap taken. 50-50 ball to Cooper. Out of bounds incomplete. Closely in coverage to him was Devontae Samuel. Check that. That was Sincere Blackman in coverage. Going to get a clear read on the number there. Incompletion will bring up third and long for the Steers. Both TJ Hookfin and Lindsey for the Steers are in the top ten for receiving yards in the Sooner Athletic Conference. 13 minutes and 25 seconds remaining at quarter number one. The Steers now facing a third and long. They got four out wide, one receiver alone at the bottom of the formation on the short side of the field. Brown has a back to his right. Shotgun snap is taken. It's a handoff going to the outside. It's going to be Chris Winters in his first carry. He might have been short of the first down marker. He gets tackled down at the 45 by a host of steers. And responsible for the hit is, John, is Josh Morris again. Morris with his second tackle of the game. Then it's going to be fourth down and one in decision time for Coach Jarrell Jackson and company. As now the Rams are... Just maybe one more play away from getting a big-time stop as the Steers in their first offensive possession have looked pretty darn good. But Texas College might try to punt this thing away. Or no, indeed, they're going to run it. It's fourth down and short. They're going to hand it off to Arroyo. Arroyo isn't going to get anywhere. If anything, he lost a yard. A host of Rams there on the tackle. First man to get there was, guess who, Zeno Marchaschelli. He was a Sooner Athletic Conference Defensive Player of the Week just two weeks ago, and now the Rams will have their first offensive possession, first and ten. Starting quarterback for the Rams this week, once again, is going to be Cole Francis. No Carson Rogers for the Navy in gold. Vernon Harrison is going to be the back one receiver in the slot. Three out wide total for Texas Wesleyan. They're going to hand it off to Harrison. Harrison gets to the outside, and he's got space. It's a foot race at the 20, 15, 10. gets tripped up at the 10-yard line, and it's going to be first and goal for the Rams. Get another look at that circle in crawfish instant replay. One thing about this Rams running back core, they're all fast, and they can all break off big plays, as we've seen here, as it looks like Texas Wesleyan is going to waste no time. First and goal play. They hand it off to Harrison again, and he isn't going to get very far. Might have gained a yard, and he did. He got to the nine-yard line. As we take one more look at the play from or the run from Harrison that has put Wesleyan in this current spot now, second and goal from the nine-yard line, just breakneck speed, getting an open field, and a touchdown-saving tackle made by Texas College. Second and goal with 11:47 and counting remaining in the first. Harrison takes the handoff, bounces to the outside, gets a block. He's at the five, marches through, gets brought down at the two-yard line. That's going to be a gain of seven and third and goal. Vernon Harrison has gotten it done already for this Wesleyan offense. As we know, if you want to try to stop this team or at least think about trying to stop this team, you're going to have to stop the run game, and not very many teams have been able to do it so far this year. Of course, a win last week here on ASN2 against the visiting Pioneers of Wayland Baptist. They're going to hand it off to Harrison again, and he gets brought down short at about the one-yard line. On the tackle for the Steers was Dylan Dubois. Now it's fourth and goal. Big fourth and goal here. They're going to keep it on the field. Flag is thrown. Tush push is successful. 
But as we go down to the field to get the call. Five yard penalty, false start called against the Ste well, against the Rams. And instead of fourth and goal from the one, it's going to be fourth and goal from the six yard line. And it looks like it'll it's going to be field goal time. That's Garrett Blodgett, the six foot one hundred and sixty pound sophomore, will look to do the honors here on fourth and goal. Good snap, good hold, kick is up through the uprights and good. We have our first score of the game, and it's going to be the Rams who strike first, but not before Harrison put a mark on this game with a big-time run. With a 10.45 remaining in this one, looks like we got ourselves a little bit of a ball game. Back after this, this is Steer Football, presented by Yosemite Roofing on ASN2. Announce the name of the business on this sheet. Name the business? Mm -hmm. ah! Ooh, uh, yo, 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 Samite, yo, Seamite, yo, Zamite Roofing, or yo, yo, me, Yosmite Roofing, yo, Zay, yo, Zay Might, yo, Zay Might. Hey guys, it's Josiah with Yosemite Roofing, and we don't care what you call us as long as you call us. After a blodget field goal, the Rams get on the board first and get the scoring going in this contest. And it's an arcing kick, plenty of distance, plenty of height. And this here's will take it from the two-yard line. Going the other way is going it to be Aaron McClure. McClure gets pushed out right, right in front of the 30-yard line. Looks like he might have gone to the 27. Now they're going to mark him down at the 25-yard line, so pretty much the same as a touchback. So 3-0 our score here at Christian's Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium. Texas College on their last offensive possession. Got to around almost midfield, but had to get the ball back after a short run by Paul Arroyo was stuffed. One yard behind the line of scrimmage, forcing the turnover on downs. But the Steers will take it back over first down and 10 from the same place they started their last drive from the 25-yard line. One receiver on the short side of the screen, two on the wide side with one in the slot. Two tight ends and a running back here for the Steers. They're going to hand it off to the outside to Winters. Winters bounces out. Gets bounced out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. They're going to give him a gain of around four, and that's exactly what they'll give him. Result of the play is going to make it second down in six for Texas College with ten and a half minutes remaining in quarter number one. Steers won the first ever meeting between these two ball clubs here at Christmas Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium back in 2017. Score of that one was 21 to 11. Brown back in the gun. Looking, drops back, rolls out, gets crammed, and gets rolled and brought down. The Rams eventually able to get to him. That's going to be a loss of 11. On the hit was T.J. Curtis for the Steers. Well, for the Rams, and man. Third down and long, about third down and 17 is going to be the result of that one. Ball is right on the 19-yard line. Steers back in the gun. Four out wide, and only one back to Brown's left. Takes the shotgun snap and looking. Steps up in the pocket, still has space, directing traffic, looking for a block, but instead gets hit right on the back plate, but not before he gains four and gets pushed out of bounds, making it fourth and long. And it's going to be punt time for the Steers yet again. Only a short gain there, fourth and 13. That entire, off, that entire offensive drive... Yardage gain or loss was negative three. Not a lot of movement on that last offensive drive for the Steers. After an opening drive that showed plenty of promise. As seen that the Steer band is slowly trotting into the stadium here at Christian Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium. Maximum capacity of about 8,000, but not a lot in, in the company for today's game. Bobbled kick is going to be taken the other way by Jason Price. The All-American returner isn't going to get very far, maybe gain a couple of yards, but it's going to be first and 10 either way for Texas Wesleyan with 8.41 remaining in the first quarter of play. Last offensive drive, it was a Garrett Blodgett field goal that put them on the board and gave us our current 3-0 score. I'm 
The Rams' offense, as we know, is as, as prolific as it has been all year. They've scored 50 or more points in three games, and they've scored 30 or more points in every game this year but two. Here's Francis. Francis takes the shotgun snap, looking to throw. Has a man in his complete sliding catch is made. Pass is hauled in by the Rams' number six, A.J. Bob. As we know, Bob is one of the most consistent receivers on this Rams' offense, and you can see exactly why. Gain of seven is going to make it second and three. Rams rushing back to the line, not wasting too much time. Harrison in it, running back yet again. They're going to hand it to him. Bounces to the outside. Stiff arm is going to get the first down and looking for some extra change. He's going to gain a pretty good amount. Gain of nine by Harrison. is going to move the change yet again for the Rams. First down in ten. Balls on the 28-yard line with 7.50 remaining in quarter number one. Francis play action, gets it to Bob across the seams, and the hash into the end zone, touchdown Rams. A.J. Bob, 28-yard touchdown reception. Perfect throw and patience by Francis. And the Rams get our first touchdown of the game as we take another look with our circle M crawfish instant replay. Bob beat his man across the hash and just did the rest of the work himself. And now we got ourselves a contest. Blodgett, field goal is up through the uprights and good. And the Rams expand their lead. 28-yard touchdown pass from A.J. Bob gives us our new score. With 7.45 remaining in the first quarter of play, it's Texas Wesleyan 10, Texas College nothing. Back after this, this is Tier Football presented by Yosemite Roofing on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2. After the successful, well, the 28-yard touchdown pass from Francis to Bob, Sears an opportunity to bounce back on offense yet again. Taking the kickoff, now going the other way is going to be Lindsey. Lindsey gets brought down at about the 25-yard line. And once again, the Sears will take over at around the same spot they've taken over every offensive drive this far. But Coach Rell Jackson and company, of course, looking for a different result. They failed to convert on fourth down their first drive. They had to punt the ball back to the Rams on their second drive. Well, you know, the old saying goes, third time's a charm. Looking to have some much better luck here. It's first down to 10. Ball is on the 24-yard line. Seven minutes and 38 seconds remaining in quarter number one. Brown back in at quarterback. Has a back to his right. He's going to hand it off up to the middle. And now bouncing onto the outside is Winters. Chris Winters, that is. He's going to gain a yard. And that's going to make it second down and nine to go. Both of these teams, very storied history. The Sears of Texas College, one of two HBCUs in the Sooner Athletic Conference. Of course, Langston is the only other. Now with second and nine with seven minutes and ten seconds to go. Shotgun snap. Brown looking to his right. Pump fakes. Gets rolled and brought down. Ball comes out. The Steers have it still going to the outside. Now looking for some kind of yards is Winters. Winters pretty much left in the cold after Brown tried to pitch it out to him before he got eventually brought down, and that's going to be a loss of seven. It's going to be third down and 16, third down in a country mile. Ball is on the 18-yard line with 640 remaining at quarter number one. The Steers pretty much have to get to loop 323 if they want to move the chains and continue this drive. 18 seconds on the play clock. A couple of adjustments being made at the line of scrimmage. Shotgun formation, four out wide for the Steers. Snap is taken. Stepping up is Brown. Brown is going to try to call his own number. Fakes, looks like he tried to shovel it. Had a man in the flat. Looks like Anthony Holden, the receiver, standing along the hashes at around the 29-yard line. Was looking for the ball or looking for even a look, but isn't going to get anything but see his quarterback get brought down in front of him. And that is only going to get 10 yards. He needed six extras, fourth and six, and another four and out. For the Steer offense with six minutes remaining. Here to do the, kick, the kicking honors is DeAndre Hill. The dangerous one. 
The All-American, Jason Price, back deep to receive for Wesleyan. Great snap, Hill, low kick. Price is going to field it at around the 43-yard line. of Benavides hits him from behind right on the back plate as he gets across midfield, and Wesleyan will begin this next drive in steer territory, first and 10. Ball will be placed at about the 48-yard line with five minutes and 40 seconds remaining. The 16th ranked team in the land, the Rams of Texas Wesleyan. Number two ranked defense in the Sooner Athletic Conference. Number three ranked offense in the Sooner Athletic Conference. Two words to best describe these guys, well-rounded. Little pre-snap movement, but no flag is thrown. Pass was deep intended for Michael Banks, but no flag thrown there either. And I'm interested to see who might have moved first on that one? As so we're going to take another look. Look at the line of scrimmage here. It was definitely the Steers who looked like they crossed into the neutral zone first. But that incompletion is going to make it second down and 10. Quarterback now in. Looks like it's going to be Carson Rogers getting a little bit of run. And he hand, for his first snap is going to be a handoff to Harrison. Harrison with a gain of nine. Check that, a gain of eight and make it third down and two to go for the Rams. Rodgers, as we know, one of the best quarterbacks in the Sooner Athletic Conference. The 6'5", 215-pound freshman. Rodgers on the third and short. Snaps his hands. Shotgun snap. Turn it the other way. And it's got open space on the sideline. It's going to be Michael Banks. And he gets brought down at the 10. Another touchdown saving tackle made by the Steers. This time is Kenby on Lamb, the defensive back, saving that one. And that's the Carson Rodgers that we've seen pretty much all year long. Precise and accurate, letting his receivers make the plays. And after that reception, they'll move the chains. Ball is going to be... Right at about the 11-yard line, so not first and goal just yet. To get a fresh set of downs, I'll have to get to the one. They hand it off over to Harrison. Harrison gets brought down maybe a yard behind the line. It's scrimmage getting the hit. It's going to be Ross. Brazion Ross, a linebacker slash defensive back with a big-time hit there. They're going to give him forward progress. Well, little to no forward progress. Instead of a second and 11, the Rams will face a second and 10. Four minutes and 22 seconds remaining in quarter number one. Rodgers getting the call from the sideline, stepping back, talking to his offensive line, maybe asking where to go to eat after this game. Who knows? New back now in for the Rams is going to be at number 34, AMJ. Ashton Mitchell Johnson. It's a fade ball outside into the flat intended for the Rams, number 20, Devontae Samuel. But Rodgers a little bit too much on that one. Incompletion will make it third down and 10. A big time third down. If you're the Texas College defense, it's only a 10 point game. Easily something you can overcome with four minutes and five seconds remaining in the first quarter. But that all starts with a stop here on third down. AMJ back in it running back. Rogers has four receivers out wide. The lone receiver at the bottom of the formation is the elusive AJ Bob. Shotgun snap for Rodgers. He's looking at Bob. He has him into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. A.J. Bob, his second touchdown of the game, and the lead expands for the Rams. Rodgers, an 11-yard touchdown pass to what could be his possibly favorite receiver. Steers looked like they had him covered, had a zone over on top, but just couldn't find Bob in time as Blodgett awaits the PAT. Great snap, great hole, kick is up, and good. The A.J. Bob and Carson Rogers connection proves pivotal yet again as the Rams increase their lead. Four minutes remaining in the first quarter of play. Texas Wesleyan 17, Texas College nothing. Back after this, this is Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2.
Daniel Trejo will kick things off for the Rams after the touchdown reception from Bob makes it a 17-0 game. Lindsey is back deep to receive for the Sears. He'll stand tall at around the five-yard line. If there's any man who could probably hit that video board behind the goalpost, it's Daniel Trejo. Is it a line drive kick? Not a lot of height. Will it go out of bounds? No, it won't. Hastings is going to take this out about the three. Turn, spins along the sideline at the five. Now he's at the nine or about the seven. And, man, Hastings thought. Well, check that. Excuse me. That was back deep to receive for the steers. That was Lindsey. Lindsey looked like he thought it was going to go out of bounds, but it didn't. It took a hard ram bounce at about the two or three-yard line. Now Texas College offense and their offense with an even steeper mountain to climb. Instead of taking over from the 25 like they've done two out of four times already, they'll have to take over with 352 remaining in the first from their own eight. Couple substitutions here. Nine seconds remaining on the play clock. Steers got to get a move on. Might have to call a timeout here. And they do. Only two seconds remaining, and head coach Jarrell Jackson will try to talk things over with his offense. We'll take a timeout with him. 3.52 remaining back after this. It's the Steer Football presented by Yosemite Roofing on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2. Announce the name of the business on this sheet. Name of the business? Mm -hmm. ah! Ooh, uh. Yo. Yo. Yosemite? Yosemite? Yosemite roofing. Or Yos... Yosemite? Yosemite roofing? Yose. Yose Mite. Yose Mite? Hey guys, it's Josiah with Yosemite Roofing. And we don't care what you call us, as long as you call us. Timeout is concluding. Both teams are trotting back onto the field. Texas Wesleyan already with a double-digit advantage with 3.52 remaining. The Rams are up here on the road, 17-0. Here at Christmas Trinity Mother Francis Row Stadium, Jerry Jones here with you in the HTO broadcast booth for another week of good old-fashioned college football in the Sooner Athletic Conference. Next week, we'll have our college football finale as the Rams take on the Louisiana Christian Wildcats in what could be a conference championship. Here's Brown, strike pass into Cooper, is complete but only going to be good for two yards as Cooper has been the main target so far for the Steers, at least the most consistent target in terms of getting yards, with three and a half minutes left to go. Steers already down a timeout. Here's the second and long. It's an option keeper. Rolling out is going to be Brown, and Brown is going to lose a couple. Looks like he lost five on that. We take another look here. The Rams defensive front, as we've seen, led by Nino Marsha Shelley and company. Man, we know that can be absolutely stifling in the Sears. Finding out firsthand, Jay Reed on the TFL for Texas Wesleyan. Now the Steers are facing a third and 12. Remember, they started this drive on the eight. Now they're looking down the barrel of a third and long from the six. Ten seconds on the play clock. Four receivers out wide in the gun now where the Steers. Looking into the end zone now, stepping through. Got to get something up. It's in the air, incomplete. And now it's going to be a fourth down and once again a possible punting opportunity for the Steers. And something we really haven't seen so far, the Rams firing on all cylinders from the very first play of the game. But now it's already 17-0 with a hair over two and a half minutes left. I know if our good friend Jimmy the St. Christopher is listening. He knows, and I know firsthand, that the Rams have gotten into some dogfights at least early on against the likes of Wayland Baptist and Oklahoma Panhandle State. Both of those games were carried here on ASN2. Here's Hill kicking from his own end zone. Might have been tipped, but it's a line drive kick. Not a lot of distance at all. Price is eyeing it. Crosses the 40, now at the 42, and it will be down. And the Wesleyan offense will take back over well within steer territory. Forty-two yard line, the ball that will get spotted. I want to thank all of you for tuning in to today's broadcast on ASN2, your home for college football and basketball on the Antler Sports Network.
Be sure to follow all of our social media pages on Twitter at Antler underscore SN, on Facebook by simply searching Antler Sports Network. We even have a TikTok, Antler Sports Net. Here's first and 10 with 2.23 left. It's a handoff again for the Rams, and guess who it is getting his first carry of the game? It's Ernie Caesar, and it looks like the Rams are going to make another switch instead of Rodgers, as we saw the last drive. It's going to be Cole Francis taking it again. Gain of three is going to make it second and seven after the first carry from Caesar. Now, if there's anybody the, the steer defense doesn't want to see, it's this man right here, one of the best running backs in the country. They're going to hand it off to Caesar again. Caesar bounces to the outside, makes a man miss, stiff arms another defender, gets bounced out right before he gets to about the 30. Tackle made by the Steers at number 23, Jalen Smith. Smith with his second tackle of the game. That gain of eight is going to move the chains. First down and 10 with a minute 45 and rolling. 30 seconds on the play clock. And now the Sears looks like they're just trying to get Caesar immediately. But as we know, it's going to take about three or four, as we've seen even five guys to try to take down Ernie Caesar when he has a head of steam. First and 10 from the 32-yard line. We've crossed a minute and a half mark. Only two receivers at for the Rams. It's going to be a misdirection now for Caesar. Caesar gets a block and brought down by three steer defenders. That's exactly how you, that's one way to try to bring him down. As he looks like a looks like he's a tad slow to get up. On the hit for the steers was, was Anthony Hawkins, and it looks like Caesar's down. Caesar's a bit slow to get up as they take a look at him. We'll take a short break back in 30 seconds on ASN2. Looks like Caesar is getting helped up off of the field. Hopefully he can return into this game. Hopefully the young man's okay. Caesar, the prolific back, as we know, wasn't rostered, well, was rostered for this game. It was Vernon Harrison who got the initial nod at starting running back position for the Steers, well, excuse me, for the Rams. And it looks like he's trotting back onto the field. Yes, indeed, that is Vernon Harrison who will be in for Caesar, sending his best wishes to him. After his last gain, a gain of six, and that will make it second down and four to go for the Wesleyan offense with a minute flat remaining in the first quarter of play. Francis is back in at quarterback. Now they have one slot receiver, the Rams do. Francis stepping up, looking, and it's complete right along just outside of the right hatch. Pass was hauled in, caught by number 83, Christopher Doyle. Just another one of those consistent weapons that the Rams have on the offensive side of the ball. We know the typical names, Caesar, Rogers, and A.J. Bob, but it's the Doyles and the AMJs that really make this Ram offense tick. Delayed handoff to Harrison. Harrison gets to the outside as a head of steam. Bounces through into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. 14-yard touchdown is in for Harrison. And the lead expands for Texas Wesleyan as we take another look with our Circle M Crawfish instant replay. Delayed handoff there from Francis. Harrison initially got hit at about the 10. Bounces off, jumps over his tier defender, and bounces his way into the end zone. Now, barring the PAT from Blodgett, is going to make it 23 to nothing. Only 21 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Good snap, good hold. Blodgett winds this one up and through, hits the track, and then almost goes past the scoreboard. And with the successful PAT, the Ram offense is cooking with fish grease. Back after this, it's 24 0 on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2. Name the business. Mm -hmm. ah! Ooh, uh, yo, 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 Samite, yo, Samite, yo, Samite, roofing, or yo's, yo's me. 
Yosemite, you think? Yose, Yose Might. Yose Might? Hey guys, it's Josiah with Yosemite Roofing, and we don't care what you call us, as long as you call us. Lindsay is back deep for the Steers to receive. Blodgett here to boot things away for Texas Wesleyan, who his Rams lead 14-0. Kicking these off from the left hash, he puts an iron boot into this one. Hits the tee in the Tyler ISD mural into the end zone. And now the Steers will take over first and 10 from the 25-yard line with the touchback. Only 21 seconds remaining, remaining to go in the first quarter of play. As it looks like the unlucky Ram has to go back and retrieve the, the blodget boot is Michael Dante. Kind of feels sorry for the kid. Definitely has to travel a good ways to retrieve any kick that Blodgett puts that iron shoe into. First and 10 from the 25 after the touchback. 21 seconds remaining. Shotgun snap is taken by Brown. Brown winds up looking, has a man incomplete. Looks like it was a little crossing route combination by the steer receiving core, it was McClure and Jalen Jackson crossing. Looks like the pass was intended for Jackson, who broke off into the flat. But McClure, a little bit of miscommunication there. Results in the incompletion is going to be second and 10 with 15 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Same formation now. Brown in the gun. Takes a snap. Faking the handoff. Looking. Sails the bottom of the flat, and it is complete. Right along the numbers as Jackson makes up for it with his first completion of the game. With two seconds, one second, and that will do it. We've played one quarter of action, and it has been all Texas Wesleyan. After one quarter, it's 24-0. Back after this, this is Tier Football presented by Yosemite Roofing on the Antler Sports Network, ASN2, and AntlerSN.com. After the end of quarter number one, we're ready for 15 more minutes of college football here on the Antler Sports Network as the second quarter is moments away from beginning. Field gets flipped. Fresh 15 is on the clock, and we're set. It's going to be a third down and three facing the Steers after the completion to Jackson. Official gives this whistle. We're set to go to restart play. Fakes the handoff now, Brown. Brown walloped as he throws down. Field for Cooper, incomplete. Cooper wanted a flag, and let's take another look to see if his gripe was justified as Wesleyan definitely had great downfield coverage and the incompletion making it fourth down in three. Getting another look. No, it looks like it was just simply tipped away. And covers there for the Rams. It was Vontae Samuel sacked that. That was Dalen Rogers in coverage. And it looks like Hill will be ready to kick things off for Texas College yet again. We've only played seven seconds in the first quarter of play. Back deep is Price for the Rams. Still waiting with two seconds left. And there's a flag thrown at the line of scrimmage. Ball takes a bounce at midfield. The Rams touch it. Looks like it hit the back of a Ram. Since here, Blackman looks like he went off his ankle. And the Steers fall on the football. They say they have it, but there are flags thrown at the 30-yard line. As now the officials convene at the 30 to maybe talk things over. This is a pivotal call. As it looks like they're pointing, looking to identify who the infraction is going to be called against. Looks like it was an illegal procedure penalty called against Texas College. Man, that could have been a big-time opportunity for the Steers, but it's been snatched away. 
And now those fourth downs is going to be a tad bit more difficult. Instead of a fourth and short, now it's going to be fourth and eight after the five-yard penalty. Hill will still be kicking things off. Prize is back deep, standing at his, standing at his own 40. Back heels along the right hash. Hill takes a snap. No, it's blocked. It's going the other way. Hill falls back on it, tries to push forward, but instead of a kickoff opportunity, well, a kick return opportunity for Price, it's going to be first down and goal for the Rams at the five yard line. The winds of change indeed blow strong. And they're blowing in favor of the Texas Wesleyan Rams with 14 35 remaining in the first half of play. Instead of first and goal on the five, check that. They're going to call it first and goal on the six. But either way, I don't have to be a betting or a gambling man to assume it's going to be a good old-fashioned handoff and barrel the way into the end zone. Back into the backfield is going to be Vernon Harrison. Still looking on the sideline for Caesar. Might try to check up on him. An important aspect of this Ram offense indeed. But they're going to go this play without him. 14-35, of course. Looks like their officials are talking. Looks like they're going to try to talk to the band and tell them to stop playing. And it looks like they an infraction called against the band. I don't think that's the first time that's ever happened on the Antler Sports Network. And just to see word that it looks like Terrell Hookfin has switched. Instead of his typical number two, he is wearing number zero in this contest. Here's a handoff to Harrison. Harrison gets hit behind the line, pushed back. He might have lost a yard as the Steers are ready for it immediately, and a flag is thrown late. On the hit for the Steers was Martell Jones. As we take another look here, of course, the Steer fans that are in attendance, not happy with that one. Now, there was a host of steers on the hit as we get the call. So a fresh set of downs now for the Rams after the penalty was called against Martel Jones. As now a fresh set of downs, it's first and goal. And set it from the six, it's going to be from the four with 14 minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the half. They're going to hand it off to Harrison again. Harrison looking for blocks, pushing through, gets across the pile on end zone. Touchdown Rams again. It took the Rams a minute. Harrison was just slowly but surely using his outside blockers. Great job by the left guard and left tackle, both Glass now and Bonner respectively for giving Harrison the extra push as he crosses the pylon and there is a flag thrown. And it looks like a, an infraction or personal foul was called. It's called one of, referee said it was called against one of the assistant coaches for Texas College, so either way the touchdown will stand. It's still 30 to nothing with 14 Minutes and three seconds remaining in the first half. As Blodgett awaits the Trejo hold. Great hold, great kick through the uprights, and good. The Rams get in the end zone again. This time from a good old-fashioned push from the offensive line. Score now after the PAT. It's 31-0. Advantage Rams back after this. This is College Football on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2.
And it looks like there was, right before the kickoff, another unsportsmanlike penalty called against the assistant coach of Texas College. Don't know if that was the same assistant coach that got it right before, right after the touchdown by the Rams. So now the Rams will kick things back to the steers. From the midfield logo, the beautiful red rose in the middle of Christmas Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium. We've got kickoff yet again. 14 minutes remaining. Going the other way is going to be the Steers who take this kickoff at about the five. Bounce out of bounds. Tackle was made by the Rams' Kylan Woods. And there's a flag thrown in around the 20-yard line. So that's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back flags. Well, it was one after the touchdown, one after the PAT, and one before the kickoff. As they're going to talk things over yet again. Holding penalty is going to be called against the Steers. So even what was a promising kickoff return isn't going to be too promising. But instead, well, either way, they're still going to get first down and 10 with 13 minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the first half. The Steers have two timeouts. Coach Prudhomme and company for the Rams have all three of theirs. As I mentioned earlier, that's Terrell Hookfin that's wearing the number zero. Hookfin now in at quarterback, typically plays some receiver as well as he takes the shotgun snap, looking, winds up across the middle, it's picked off! Got it out of the way of the Rams! Mulching for the end zone, did he get through? That's Jay Reed bouncing in. They're going to call him short, down at the one-yard line. As Jay Reed read that throw from Hookfin perfectly as we take another look. Reed just breaking across and gets hit out of bounds, trying to see if he got into the end zone. As let's take another look. Can't really tell if he got through or did he get the ball out in time. No, at least from this angle, he's going to be just short. So once again, the Rams will begin their next offensive possession. First and goal. Ball is at the one-yard line. Carson Rogers is back in at quarterback for the Rams. It's Harrison the back, two receivers out wide. Two tight ends down for the Rams. Going to be a handoff to Harrison. Harrison bounces through end zone. Touchdown again for Texas Wesleyan. As it looks like we have an injured steer down. So we take another look at that last touchdown run from Harrison. We've seen it all year long in these short yardage situations. You know what's going to happen. You just can't stop it. As their injured steer gets treated, we'll take a brief timeout back after this. This is Texas College Tip Football presented by Yosemite Roofing on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2. Now we come back after the injured steer gets helped off of the field. Trejo awaiting the snap for the PAT. After the one-yard touchdown run from Harrison. Harrison, his second touchdown of the game. Blodgett about as automatic as the car I drove to get here. Kick it through the uprights and good. And now your new score after the Harrison touchdown. Rams still in absolute control. After the last touchdown, it's 38 0, 1341 remaining. Back after this, this is Steered Football, presented by Yosemite Roofing on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2. Can you announce the name of the business on this sheet? Name of the business? Mm -hmm. ah! Ooh, uh, yo, 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 Yosemite? Yosemite? Yosemite Roofing. Or Yos, Yos me. Yosemite Roofing? Yose, Yose Might. Yose Might? 
Hey guys, it's Josiah with Yosemite Roofing, and we don't care what you call us, as long as you call us. As Blodgett tees the ball up from the 45, we'll tease it up from the 35, and we're set back to go. Here with 13 at 41 remaining. The Sears take the kickoff from about the two. It's Lindsey. Lindsey gets across the middle, now gets crammed again at about the 25-yard line on the big time hit and rushing to the sideline in excitement for the Rams. Let's keep Sean Rubel. Rubel, the 5'10 to 180-pound freshman with a hit, and now the Sears will trot back onto the field first and 10. Down big, 38 nothing. your score. They have two timeouts. 13 minutes and 21 seconds remain in the first half of play here from Christmas Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium. Not the biggest crowd in the world today. It's been a very muggy couple of days, and now it seems that the rain is starting to fall here at Rose Stadium. Seemed to be a pretty even split of attendees here. The Ram fans usually tr travel pretty well. Here's Hookfin. Hookfin rolling, and it's almost picked off again. No. Just a mere fingertips away from it was Dalen Rodgers. As Rodgers almost had that one. Could have been the second interception of the game for the Rams and back-to-back -back interceptions in this game alone. 13-22 after the incompletion. It's second and 10. Ball is still on the 25-yard line. Four receivers now for Hookfin and one back, that back being Winters. They're going to hand it off to him. No one's going to be a keeper. Hookfin gets to the outside, looking for a block from Hill. Doesn't get it. Turns the corner, steps out of bounds at about the 40, and that'll move the chains. First time in a pretty good second that we've seen the Steers get a first down, and what a better way to do it. The same way they've gotten most of their offense done this game, using their breakneck speed, getting into the flat, and that's how you know that C.J. Hookfin, even though he has a different number on, he definitely is going to get out of bounds as he gets a high five after moving the chains. It's first down and 10 from the 39-yard line, 12 minutes and 53 seconds at counting. Hookfink taking the snap, looking, winds up, pump fakes, has a man downfield. Caught, no, it's incomplete. Pass was intended for Anthony Holden. Holden just couldn't hold on to that one. Hookfink might have put a little bit too much mustard, but that couldn't have been six if Holden was able to catch it in stride. 12 minutes and 44 seconds after the incompletion. It's going to be second down and long for the Steers. Hookfin back in the gun, faking the handoff. Heavy pressure, one-handed catch, no incomplete. Tyree Lindsay looked like he tried to hit it up to himself and give him a better chance at hauling it in. Just couldn't complete it. That's the incomplete pass to Lindsay from Hookfin. We'll bring up third and ten. Ball still on the 39-yard line. Cooper is back in as a receiver. He's over at the top of your screen. Lindsay is back in at the back in the slot. Another slot receiver on the other side is going to be Jalen Jackson. Shotgun snap. Handoff. Bounce to the outside. Stutter stepping in, looking, rolling forward, getting to the 45-yard line on the carry for Texas College. It's going to be the running back, and that's number six. I'll check that, trying to see who that was on the carry. Looks like that might have been Chris Winters yet again. No matter who that was, it was short. And I was going to be, after the gain of six, it's going to make it a fourth and four for the Steers. And the offense looks like they're staying on the field. That's Alante Brewer, the running back on that last run. Big time fourth down for Texas College. Hookfin looking, has a man, it's Hill. Got enough for the first down. That's going to be a gain of eight. Move the chains. And now for the first time today, the Steers are in Ram territory. And it looks like there is a steer down. That's Deontay Hill. That's a big-time loss there. And as he gets treated to, we'll take a timeout. Back in 30, this is Ram football, steer football on the Antler Sports.
as Hill gets escorted off the field. He is walking under his own power. Hopefully he's going to be okay, especially for the sake of this offense, as Hill was the one who completed that last pass from Hookfin. Gave the Sears this first and 10. Ball is now on the opposite 45-yard line after the Hill completion. Back in at running back is going to be Alante Brewer. Hookfin takes the shotgun snap. Drops back to pass. Looking, stutter steps, rolls, sit farms the defender, still going at the 50, moving backwards, didn't get very far. They're not going to give him any forward progress. Instead, that's going to be a loss of four. Result to the TFL is going to be second down and 14. A host of Rams led by guess who? Zeno Marsha Shelley again heading this Texas Wesleyan Ram front. He's a Sooner Athletic Conference Defense Player of the Week for a reason, ladies and gentlemen, and you can see why there. Ten minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the first half. Ball is on the 49-yard line. The Steers facing a second down and 14 to go. Hook fitting under the gun. Winds up pass down the sideline. It's caught. No, it's incomplete. Josh Moore has had a hand on it. It was tipped, intended for the Steers number 81, Air McClure, as it was a pretty solid throw. Man, what a great hand by Morris to bat it down just in time. And now it's going to bring up a third and long after the incompletion. Josh Moore's with an acrobatic hand. Looks like he was trying to block a basketball shot or tip a rebound. I bet Coach Shingleton, if he's watching, definitely impressed with that last play. After the incompletion, it's third and long. Looking again. Throw on the sideline, and it's picked off. Josh Morris again. Could have got the interception last time. Got it this time. As the Rams come up with their second interception of the game with 10-19 remaining in this one. Moore's read it perfectly and a celebration to boot. Now first and 10 for the Rams. 38-0 with 10-19 remaining. The Rams will take back over first and 10 from the 35-yard line with all three of their timeouts in tow. The Steers with two. Rodgers is back in at quarterback. Harrison the running back. Throw is complete over the cross the middle to Bob. Bob gets rolled down. He's only going to gain one tackle made in open field. About this year's number 25, Elijah Jackson. Haven't really seen a lot of A.J. Bob in this one. At least one couple of things we can guarantee with this Ram offense. Running the football. The football is going to get ran. They're going to run the football. And A.J. Bob is going to get a couple of touches. That's only his second reception of the game. Is now bringing up looking at a second and nine from the 36. Bob, the receiver at the bottom of your screen. Roger with Harrison as his back, Steers rushing four. Rogers looking through his progression, has a man across the middle. It's caught complete. That's Devontae Samuel, his second reception of the game. Perfect gain. He needed nine. He got nine. Move the chains yet again, first and ten for the Rams as the drive will continue. We've crossed the nine-and-a-half-minute mark as now the Rams wasting no time getting back to the line of scrimmage. The Steers looking to make defensive adjustments. Can't make them in time. Rogers to throw to Bob is incomplete. He gets popped right after the incompletion. As Bob with his third target of the game didn't haul it in this time. He was the one that had to catch a couple of plays ago. As Bob now will switch fields, go to the other side of the field, now back in at the bottom of your screen. Rogers still in at quarterback here. We've seen some Cole Francis today. We even saw some Ernie Caesar before he came down with an injury early in the second quarter. That's a handoff to Harrison. Harrison is going to gain four. Host of Steers on the tackle, led by number 52, Sincere Mullen, the outside linebacker responsible for the hit. With eight minutes and 57 seconds left, that gain of three is going to make it third down and seven for Texas Wesleyan. Clock still rolling, 25 seconds on the play clock. Eight minutes and 45 seconds remaining on the game clock. Two timeouts in tow for the Steers, three for the Rams. 
Rodgers back into the gun, looking to his left side at the stack of receivers. Puts Harrison in motion, possible screen, and it is. Rejects the screen, has a man across the middle, big time catch, an even bigger hit. Pass is going to be complete to Devontae Samuel, but at what cost is Samuel took a massive hit as he hauled that one in. Rodgers did a great job of putting it to where only he could get it, moving the chains once more. Gain of eight is going to make it first and ten. For Texas Wesleyan, 8 minutes and 15 seconds remaining in half number one. Clock still rolling. One thing about this Ram offense, if they want to, they can hold this ball for the remaining eight minutes. Here's Rodgers again in the gun. Has a man in the flat. Another big-time hit, but yet again another completion. Pass is going to be hauled in to Ronnie Schneider. Schneider, his first catch of the game. He's going to gain six and bring up second and four. Schneider, one of the faster backs in this Wesleyan receiving core, as we've seen throughout the year, as the Antler Sports Network has been covering Rand football. We'll be heading back to beautiful Crowley Multipurpose Stadium next Saturday as the Rams will take on the Wildcats of Louisiana Christian. Here's Rogers. Man across the middle is caught. Gets who is Ronnie Schneider again. Schneider gets brought down at around the 15. Tackles made by the Steers, number four, Arnold Young. The linebacker having to drop back in coverage. And after the completion, move the chains once more. It's first and ten for Texas Wesleyan. Seven minutes and eight seconds in the first half of play. Rodgers back in the gun. Looking. Has a man across the middle. Open field. It's going to be AMJ. Pushes through. Touchdown Rams. A man whose name we pretty much called all year long. AMJ gets in the end zone once again as we take another look. That strike from Rodgers in perfect timing. Spins off of three Steers defenders to get his first touchdown of the game. As Trejo prepares the hold for Blodgett. Current score as it stands is 44-0. As the steer defense is not able to get anything done, and the Ram offense has been firing on all cylinders. Hold from Trejo, kick from Blodgett through the uprights and good. Now your new score after the AMJ touchdown catch from Rodgers with 6.50 remaining in this one. It's Texas Wesleyan. 45. Texas College, nothing. Back after this, it's his tier football on the Antler Sports Network presented by Yosemite Roofing. After the touchdown reception by AMJ, the Mitchell Johnson house call with 650 gives us our current score of 45 to nothing. Back deep to receive for the Steers is going to be Elijah Jackson. As Blodgett boots this one away. And it looks like it's going to be hauled in by the Steers at about the 15. Turn it the other way and looking for some open space is going to be Lindsey. Lindsey along the sideline at the 50. Gets bounced out at about midfield. If he would have stayed in bounds by a couple of steps, probably could have gotten to the end zone as there was only one Ram defender that was close enough to get him. That Ram defender being Kareem Walker, the 5'11", 190-pound sophomore defensive back in kickoff coverage, was the main man who probably kept Lindsey from staying in bounds and charting the sideline. But Texas College will get pretty good field position for this next drive. First and 10, ball is going to be placed for at the 47-yard line. 6 minutes 41 seconds remaining in the first half of play. The Steers have only been in Ram territory once today. Hookfin dropping back. Strike. Has a man along the sideline incomplete. Pass was intended for Holden and coverage yet again was Josh Morris. Morris already has a pick in every quarter in this game. He's got more picks in the first half than the the Houston Texans doing the NFL draft. It's six and a half minutes remaining. Ball still on the 47 as we're mere moments away from halftime. Be sure to stay with us for the HTO halftime refresh. 
We'll take a look at some scores across the Sooner Athletic Conference and get you ready for the second half of play. Here's Hookfin to the gun now. Takes a snap. Looking, steps up, and dropped behind the line by guess who? Number 52, Arian Bott. We've said his name pretty much all season long as he adds another TFL to his repertoire. Loss of seven. Loss of about seven. Check that. They're going to call it a loss of eight. Third down and 18 to go for the Sears here on offense. Chris Winters, the running back, back into this one. Cooper, the lone receiver on the wide side of the field at the top of the formation. Hookfin takes a shotgun snap, drops back, looking, rolls out to his right, has Bot right in front of him He's, as he falls, and Bot gets it up as it's thrown. Whiffed out of bounds. Are they going to call intentional grounding? No, don't think they are. As it looks like line judges... Trotting from the Wesleyan sideline in towards the referee. Yes, there is a flag. Right at the bottom of the pile, there was a flag thrown, and it is intentional grounding. Result of the flag, of course, it was an intentional grounding call. It's going to be a loss of down. That was going to be fourth down and 18 for Texas College. Impossible punt time yet again as their kicker or their punter was Deontay Hill. As there is no Hill, Hill is still limping on the sideline. Hope he's okay. Looks like it's going to be Hookfin to do the honors for the Steers to kick things back away. Rams looking to send the house. They indeed do. Almost kicking. This kick just goes straight up. Flag is thrown. That's going to be a roughing the kicker penalty. As the ball takes a roll and barely can get back to the original line of scrimmage. And one of the few brain hiccup moments that we've seen from the Rams, at least in special teams, they've been very, very consistent and disciplined, at least in the special teams game. It looks like it's going to be a 15-yard penalty. It said it was an automatic first down, but if I remembered that correctly, the last play was a fourth and 18. If that's a 15-yard penalty, it should be fourth and three. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, they're going to call it first down and 10. The Steers get a fresh set of downs and move the chains. It's five minutes and 34 seconds remaining in the second quarter. The Steers have two timeouts to work with. As now they're pretty much starting from the original line of scrimmage. Well, from their original line of scrimmage, plus a yard. It's under the 47. They're now at the 48. Hookfin in danger. Navigating the pocket. Has a man and is hauling in along the sideline. But did he catch it? They say he did. Toe tap by Chris Winters. What a grab along the sideline as we take another look via our circle and crawfish instant replay. Plenty of pressure by the Ram defense as we slow it down. Take another look to see if he might have Halt that thing in. Looks like he did indeed get a foot in bounds. That's going to be first and 10 yet again for the Steers. They hand it off to Winter once more. Winters is only going to get a yard. Second down and nine. By 24, Jefferson. Jefferson on the hit for the, for the Rams. And this is the best the Steers offense has looked all game long. We're just hoping that they can at least try to capitalize on that. Four minutes and 33 seconds and counting remaining in the first half of play. The Steers got to get something going here. Man in motion is going to be Jackson. Jackson now moving at the top of the formation. Now rolls out across the middle. They're looking for him, and he's got it. It's hold in. Hold it at the five, crossing inside the five. First down for the Steers. Bailey with his first target and first catch of the game. Steers now looking at first and goal from the four-yard line. And if they're going to get anything going, at least the Steers on offense, this is how you do it. Here's first to goal from the four. Cut across the middle, intended for Cooper, incomplete, no flag thrown. If you're going to get, if you're going to be throwing the ball in this short yardage situation, if you're Coach Jackson and the rest of the Steer offense, 
I'm throwing it to Derek Cooper. That's a pretty good target to try to look for. Another target would be Deontay Hill, but Hill is still on the sideline. Second down and goal from the four-yard line. Three minutes, 54 seconds remaining. The Rams haven't pitched a shutout since back on September 30th against the Buffaloes of Arkansas Baptist. The Steers looking to end that here. Throw is incomplete. Throw was made to the back of the end zone. Was intended for Bailey, the man who got him into this spot to begin with. And now it's going to be third down and goal from the four-yard line with 347 remaining. Don't know if the Steers have a field goal kicker, so it's really touchdown or bust if you're the Steers whether you have a kicker or not. McClure, Jackson, and Cooper, the wideouts here. For the Steers, Jackson now moving from a slot receiver from the left of the formation, now was on the right. Still in the slot, however. Here's third and goal. One tight end. Faking the handoff. Rolling into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas College. The Steers get on the board for the first time today with a four-yard touchdown run. We take another look via the Circle M Crawfish instant replay. Steers get into the end zone on a four-yard touchdown run with 3.41 remaining in this first half of play. And now it looks like they're going to maybe go for two. Or do they, are they going to go for a field goal? I don't know if they have a kicker on roster. Looks like the Steers are going to keep the offense on the field as they'll set up for this PAT opportunity from the right hash. The Steers have two receivers stacked way at the bottom of your screen. That's McClure and Lindsey stacked up. Hookfin looking, throws complete into the end zone. Two-point conversion is good. Chris Winters gets into the end zone once more. And after the successful two-point conversion, new score, Texas College 8, Texas Wesleyan 45. Back in 30 seconds, this is Steer Football, the ASN, presented by Yosemite Roofing. Name of the business? Mm -hmm. ah! Ooh, uh, yo, yo, y yo, Yosemite, Yosemite, Yosemite roofing, or Yos, Yos me, Yosemite roofing, Yose, Yose might, Yose might. Hey guys, it's Josiah with Yosemite Roofing, and we don't care what you call us as long as you call us. After the steer touchdown, we have ourselves a new score with 341 remaining. It's now Texas Wesleyan 45, Texas College 8. As the Rams defense will not be getting a shutout today, as the steers tack on 8 instead of tacking on a good old-fashioned 7. 341 remaining in the first half of play. Not saying that the comeback is completely impossible here, but if the Steers continue to march down the field like they did on that last drive, they can slowly chop down this lead if they also get a couple of stops. But this Wesleyan offense so far today already putting up 45 points, averaging 200 yards on the ground, averaging 43 points per game, already passing that per game mark in the first half. 341 still waiting. Looks like we have a finally have a kickoff tee here. So the Steers are going to kick things back off. Doing the honors for Texas College is going to be Tyree Lindsay. Lindsay has set up as a tight end. He's set up as a receiver, and now he's a kicker. Here's the kick. High arcing kick, not a lot of distance. Fielded by the Rams at about the 20-yard line. Going the other way and looking for open spaces, Javari Sanders. As Sanders gets wrestled down at around the 45-yard line. Great opening field position now for this Rams offense as they come back onto the field. First and 10 for Texas Wesleyan with 3.32 remaining in the first half of play. The Rams could probably use the rest of this clock in one possession. Even with three extra timeouts, three timeouts in hand, the Steers have two. New quarterback in for Texas Wesleyan. It looks like that's going to be Francis who's going to get some extra snaps. We've seen Rodgers in this game. 
Yes, that is indeed Francis. Francis, strike across the middle, it's picked off! The stairs are going the other way! Bailey, the man who set up the steer touchdown, check that, that's going to be number 44, that's Dustin Thomas, the linebacker. Thomas, right place, right time with 319 left. And the Steers have new life. Throw was intended for the Rams number 83, Christopher Doyle. But instead, the Steers will take the football back. 319 remaining, and man, back-to-back -back momentum changing plays for Texas College. A touchdown on offense and a pick on defense. Can't get much better than that. They'll start at the 48-yard line, that being the Rams 48-yard line. Four receivers for Texas College. Shotgun snap. Stepping up, jump pass, and it's picked off again. This time the Rams with it. Kobe Adams, the TJC transfer in his home city. Touchdown, Sutton Six. Looking for flags, and there are no flags, but there is an injured stealer at the 45-yard line. What a turn of events. As the injured steer gets treated, we'll take an extra 30-second break. Back after this on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2. Well, if you want entertainment, you're getting that here. We had two interceptions, one resulting in another. Except the Rams interception on defense resulted in six extra points. 3.06 remaining as Trejo awaits a snap from Blodgett to expand this lead. And this is that has to be one of the craziest moments we've had, at least in our college football broadcast. Snap, good hold, good kick, and good. After the pick six, Wesleyan scores yet again, 52-8. Back after this, this is Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network, presented by Yosemite Roofing. After the pick six, Jackson and Lindsey back deep to receive for Texas College. Here to boot things off is Trejo for the Rams. Trejo breaks the huddle. The Rams dispert in their clean all-white uniforms with 3.06 remaining in the first half of play. I thought they would, either team would be able to use one possession to finish off the first half, but how wrong was I? Kickoff was hauled in by the Steers at the 10-yard line. Go the other way with it is going to be Jackson. Jackson gets nailed right, right almost at the 30-yard line. Multiple Rams on the tackle. Gain of 18. Trying to see at the bottom of the pile to see who the first Ram was to get there. I'm going to give credit on that tackle to number 85, Michael Dante. So, let's try this again, shall we? How about we get a good old offensive drive with Two minutes and 53 seconds remaining in the first half of play. We've had back-to-back -back picks. Texas Wesleyan's interception got them a touchdown. So who knows what we could see next. With 21 seconds on the play clock. Steer offense comes back onto the field. Rams defense comes back onto the field. These Steers of Texas College, the 12th oldest school in the state. That includes private and public. Man in motion. Flag is thrown up the line of scrimmage and incomplete. Flag was thrown back at about the 45, well, about at the 35-yard line, and also one thrown right behind the line of scrimmage by the head official. Let's get the call. Illegal formation on the offense. Number 95, the defensive number to play on the line of scrimmage. 
Legal percent illegal procedure penalty called against the Steers. Texas Wesleyan will decline the penalty. So the incompletion will stand at second and ten with 247 remaining in the first half. With 247 remaining, stay with us after so for the HTO halftime refresh. As now the Steers looking to get something going past this incomplete hits into the turf. Was intended for Lindsay. And it seems like that same offensive fire that the Steers had to get them into the end zone the last, the last possession is pretty much flamed out. After the ball hits the turf, it's 240 remaining in the first half. Deers coming into this record looking for their first overall and Sooner Athletic Conference win of the season. Looking at third and long, hand out to Winters. Winters breaks a couple tackles. He's going to gain 12 and move the chains. First down and 10 for Chris Winters. As the Steers rush back to the line with a fresh set of downs in hand with two minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Ball's at the 40-yard line. Winters still in it running back. Three receivers at the bottom of the formation. Cooper, the lone receiver, on the right side. First down and 10 snap. Looking, almost tipped. Cooper catches it, holding in, but eventually got walloped. Got sandwiched between two Ram defenders. As that will boast Draylon Rogers and Sincere Blackman hitting Cooper pretty much right as he was able to try to haul that ball in as we take another look via the Circle Limb Crawfish instant replay here. Matt Cooper took an absolute hit. Still on the field. That incompletion is going to make it second down and 10. Seven seconds on the play clock. Wesley in it looking to send the house. They do. They're going to rush four, almost rush five. Running throws incomplete. In covers was Dalen Rogers. Pass was intended for the Steers. Tyree Lindsey. Lindsey has been one of the main targets for Texas College so far. We typically try to see them go deep and use the deep ball and use their speed. But a lot of tight end targets so far today with 147 Remaining in the first half. Remember, the Steers have two timeouts. Wesleyan has all three of theirs. Shotgun snap. Hand off. Into open space. Still looking after the big time truck. And a gain of eight. Take another look here at that last gain of eight. Of course, with the Circle Limb Crawfish instant replay as we've hit a minute and a half remaining on this one. Big time truck. Rogers tried to go head up with him, but no dice. It's fourth down and two. Steer offense staying on the field. 15 seconds on the play clock. Lindsey in motion. Rams looking to send four, maybe even five or six. They'll send five on the rush. Marsha Shelley almost getting to him, rolling to the outside as the quarterback steps out of bounds. And did he get the first down? Yes, he did. Move the chains. And now with 56 seconds left, 56 seconds left to go in the first half. Sears have an opportunity to possibly go into the locker room with a touchdown in hand. They get a chance to breathe as the clock will not start until the play begins. First down intense snap. Looking to go deep. They do double cover. It's caught at the five foot race. Touchdown, Steers. 50 yard touchdown from Hook Finn to Derek Cooper. Hook Finn sailing it over double covers. The Rams look like they had plenty of bodies in front of Cooper. What a throw! Right over the head of Rodgers. And the lead expands. 
47 seconds left. Talked about if the Steers want to have some good old-fashioned momentum on their side. This is how they do it. And now with 47 seconds left, they're already one for one on two-point conversions. Let's see if they can go two for two here. Hookfin in the gun. Pitch to the outside. Do they get it? Yes, they do. But there is a flag. There is a flag at about the goal line as Brewer runs it in. Defensive offsides penalty called. The touchdown and two-point conversion will stand. New score. The Sears get to the end zone yet again. 47 seconds left. Texas Wesley still with a commanding lead, 52-16. to 16, But the Steers showing some fight on offense. Back after this, this is Steer Football presented by Yosemite Roofing on the Antler Sports Network. Can you announce the name of the business on this sheet? Name of the business? Mm -hmm. ah! Ooh, uh, yo, 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 Yosemite, Yosemite, Yosemite roofing, or Yos, Yos me, Yosemite roofing, Yose, Yose Mite, Yose Mite. Hey guys, it's Josiah with Yosemite Roofing, and we don't care what you call us, as long as you call us. After the Steers get into the end zone and convert for two, 47 seconds left. The Rams with a little bit of time to respond. 52 to 16 is your score. Back deep for the Rams to receive. It's Jason Price, the 5'8", 170 pound junior, all American return man. Also back with him, the also elusive Javari Sanders. He's a sophomore. Possible on-site kick here if they're so bold. And no, just going to be a good old-fashioned regular kickoff. Ball takes a bounce at about the 20-yard line. Sanders is going to take it. No, Price is going to take it. Go the other way. Cuts across at the 40. Flag is thrown in around the 40. And the Steers bring him down around the 35-yard line. But as I said earlier, there is a flag thrown. A little bit of extra words afterward. As we get the call. First time we said this guy's name today, Sir Hill on the illegal backside block penalty. We're going to make this first down just a tad bit rougher. 38 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Coach Joe Prudhomme and company have all three of their timeouts. So the Rams will take over first and 10 from their own at 21-yard line. The Steers already have an interception today. The Rams have three. They're going to hand it off to the outside now. To number 34, Ashton Mitchell Johnson, AMJ, with a short gain of about three or four. Do we wait for the official spot? They're going to give him two. Second down and eight. 19 seconds left, and it looks like this is going to be it. They're just going to trot back to the locker room. And that is indeed what they will do. We played 30 minutes of football. We've got ourselves a commanding score by the Rams. At halftime, as the clock sounds, hits triple zeros. Texas Wesleyan 52, Texas College 16. We'll take a three-minute break and begin our HTO halftime refresh back after this. This is Steer Football presented by Yosemite Roofing on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2.
If you or a loved one have multiple daily prescriptions, knowing what to take when can be confusing. This is the Brick Street Daily Dose Packet. That's Brick Street Pharmacy owner Kimberly Abel. All of your medications are going to be in a sleeve of bubbles, telling you what time of day to take them. They're all separated out already. It's in perforated packs, and it's a tear-off system. The Brick Street Pharmacy Daily Dose Pack organizes a month's worth of prescriptions into a single, simple, easy-to-follow package. When you go check on your mom, you're not having to go into her house and back count her vials to find out if she remembered to take her medicine. Saves you an office visit, keeps everybody compliant, you know everything's going well because they're taking all their medication. The Daily Dose Pack is a Brick Street Pharmacy exclusive. It's not available from the chain pharmacy and it doesn't add a penny to the cost of your prescriptions. Brick Street Pharmacy is in Tyler's Azalea District on Rusk, a block and a half west of South Broadway. They're online at BrickStreetMedical.com. BrickStreetMedical.com. Drawing up the perfect insurance plan can seem like a daunting task in this financial climate. Tackle the task with Mike Munn State Farm Insurance. We have a triple threat of home, auto, and life insurance policies to fit any budget. You can even cover your furry friends with pet insurance. Call 903-561-4535 or visit mikemunn.net to get started on a free quote. Call 903-561-4535 to get started on a free quote. Hello, I'm Mike Munn with Mike Munn State Farm, where I've been your local agent since 19... 19- as the steer band performs here at Chris's Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium, both teams are in the locker room talking things over. We are as well here during the HTO Halftime Refresh, presented by HTO, located across the street from Tyler Junior College, home of 27 freshly brewed flavors of teas and drinks every hour on the hour to please any palate. HTO, your hometown drink stop and official refreshment of the Antler Sports Network Jared Jones here with you as the Rams hold a commanding lead over the Texas College Steers, 52-16. to And we're trying to look for some scores across the conference. The main score that we have right now is between the Spirit of Ottawa and the Lions of Langston. That game, about 26 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Now they have officially hit halftime. Check that. All knotted up, the Spirit and Lions at 20 apiece. Other games that we're going to try to look for here at the half, North American is taking on the Aggies of Oklahoma Panhandle State. Louisiana Christian take on Sagu, the Lions of Southwestern Assemblies out of Waxahachie. And of course, the Langston Ottawa game that we just gave the update for. It's 20 all at the half. And also the nightcap game, the one game that's in the 6 o'clock slot for today. The Pioneers of Wayland, Baps, of Wayland Baptist will be taking on the Buffaloes of Arkansas. Baptist. So as we look for some scores, let's take one more quick timeout. This is the HTO Halftime Refresh during Steer Football, presented by Yosemite Roofing. If you or a loved one have multiple daily prescriptions, knowing what to take when can be confusing. This is the Brick Street Daily Dose Packet. That's Brick Street Pharmacy owner Kimberly Abel. All of your medications are going to be in a sleeve of bubbles, telling you what time of day to take them. They're all separated out already. It's in perforated packs, and it's a tear-off system. The Brick Street Pharmacy Daily Dose Pack organizes a month's worth of prescriptions into a single, simple, easy-to-follow package. When you go check on your mom, you're not 
not have them to go into her house and back count her vials to find out if she remembered to take her medicine. Saves you an office visit, keeps everybody compliant, you know everything's going well because they're taking all their medication. The Daily Dose Pack is a Brick Street Pharmacy exclusive. It's not available from the chain pharmacy and it doesn't add a penny to the cost of your prescriptions. Brick Street Pharmacy is in Tyler's Azalea District on Rusk, a block and a half west of South Broadway. They're online at BrickStreetMedical.com. BrickStreetMedical.com. Drawing up the perfect insurance plan can seem like a daunting task in this financial climate. Tackle the task with Mike Munn State Farm Insurance. We have a triple threat of home, auto, and life insurance policies to fit any budget. You can even cover your furry friends with pet insurance. Call 903-561-4535 or visit MikeMunn.net to get started on a free quote. 903-561-4535 to get started on a free quote. Hello, I'm Mike Munn with Mike Munn State Farm, where I've been your local agent since 19... All right, back in the HTO broadcast boot during the HTO halftime refresh. Jared Jones here with you today. As the steer band is on the field, we've hit halftime here at Chris Chris's Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium at Earl Campbell Field. It's been all Rams, Texas Wesleyan 52, Texas College 16, and we do have some halftime stats from the three games across the conference that are active outside of our game here. All three scores at the half. The Aggies of OPSU, Oklahoma Panhandle State up at home down in Stafford, just outside of Houston, as they're blanking the Stallions of North American. That score is 20 to nothing. Also at the half, Louisiana Christian, the Steers, well, the Rams' next opponent on ASN2. They're currently up ahead of the Lions of Sagu, 40 to 13. And, of course, the score that we mentioned before we took our last break, Langston 20, Ottawa 20 at the half. When we come back, we'll listen again at our own S or the Texas Wesleyan Rams SID James McBride as he has a talk with head men's basketball coach Brennan Shingleton ahead of the funky town showdown between the Rams and the TCU Horned Frogs that game will be on ASN radio and ASN2 but before that let's give our wonderful sponsors a chance at a message back after this it's the HDO halftime refresh on ASN2 and the Antler Sports Network graduating seven. Um, that's a big turnover here. I know also too you've talked about how you are not going to announce your captains yet, but if you had to speak to your team out there in Ram Nation, what would you say you expect out of your captains and what does it take to be a captain for Brendan Shingleton's team? Well, the first thing you got to be is you got to have thick skin. As a leader in our program, you got to have thick skin. Um, you have to know that we're going to treat you as a man that has ownership of this program uh, because there's so many guys that have come before us that have allowed us to get to this point now. And so we're representing them. I'm representing them. I'm representing former coaches. I'm representing people that come in and out of our program every day. And so the guys that lead our program have to buy into that philosophy of we're going to do more for others and we're expected to get back. Um, and so we haven't really established the word captain because we haven't played any games yet. I mean, we haven't had any true adversity. And so we're really looking at... Uh, you know, what kind of chemistry we have, 
uh, before we have to have chemistry, if that makes sense. Right. You know, are we, do we have good chemistry now? Well, okay, it's great, but we haven't had, we haven't been forced to have chemistry yet. And so, uh, to me, that's really what we're looking for. It, and it's coming, it's evolving. Um, you know, Chris and, and Kale have, have been setting great examples of work ethic and how to handle themselves and do certain things. But, uh, you know, sometimes leaders don't want to, you know, we could appoint a captain or a leader and they don't want to be that. Uh, and I'm not saying those guys don't, but I am saying that we have great personalities in our program, great leadership qualities in our program. Hopefully they're all respectable, respectful of each other and uh, listening and trying to figure this out because uh, we really do have some great pieces. So I, I don't have, I mean, my coaches might say something different. I don't have guys that I would, you know, put a C on their chest or put in, a, you know, the deal at half court before the game, that's nothing but just a communication to referees anyway. I, I don't want to talk to the referees, uh, so the players need to. Uh, you know, and so in that regard, that's just a, that's an old school tradition. Um, the leaders in our locker rooms are the ones that are keeping things together and doing things when no one's watching and stepping up and doing tasks that nobody wants to do or be in line and making sure guys are taking care of themselves on and off the court. So, again, we haven't, you know, as, as much as it's October and we're heading into our season, I mean, we really haven't done anything yet, you know. I mean, we're, we're embarking on a huge, huge month of November. Um, and so we're going to find out fast who, who leads us. Speaking of leadership for the Rams, coming up in the next segment, we're going to sit down and talk about Christian Lafayette, who's returning from an injury from last year. Serving Fort Worth and surrounding areas for over 40-plus years, welcome to Moritz Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, located at 9101 Camp Bowie West Boulevard, Suite 2 in Fort Worth, Texas. Our commitment to our customers continues well beyond the date of purchase. Pre-order or browse vehicles 24-7 by visiting us online or schedule service six days a week at any one of our locations. Browse our quality lineup of pre-owned vehicles in person or online at moritz-chrysler.com. Ram fans, welcome back to Meet the Rams Above the Rim. On this segment, we're going to bring in the big man here for the men's basketball team, Christian Lafayette. Christian, why don't you just introduce yourself to anybody that might not know you? Uh, Christian Lafayette uh, from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, this is my third year here at Wesleyan. Um, I started at Louisiana Lafayette for two years, um, and then I transferred over to Colorado State Pueblo, and I ended up over here in Wesleyan. So. Chris, I know last year was a very challenging year for you, I guess if you could say. Do you just want to talk about some of those challenges you had to face last year and overcome to get to where you're at now? Yeah, so... Uh, for everyone who obviously doesn't know, I went through a pretty serious injury last year, uh, right before the season started. Um, I tore a whole bunch of ligaments in my knee, um, you know, and it was a tough time for me. Uh, I had, you know, a lot of a lot of free time to to just think about things, and it gave me an opportunity to, uh, you know, look at the game a different way, like see the game a different way. Um, it gave me a chance to grow mentally. You know, because going through something like that, you know, it's not easy, obviously, uh, mentally and physically. So, yeah. So, Chris, I know going through rehab and doing stuff, you have goals that you have to hit or goals that you want to try to hit in your comeback. I know whenever we first started talking last year and you were coming back, you were talking about you needed to bring your jump shot back and everything. Yeah. What are your goals for this season for the Rams basketball team? Well, obviously, you know, we want to win the conference. Uh, we want to, you know, win a national championship, get to that tournament. Personally, uh, personal goals, I want to, you know, try to win player of the year, um, try to win first team, um, you know, and just be the best, you know, player that I can be for the team, do what I need to do, and, you know, for us to win. And, Coach, I want to bring you in here. Um, not having Chris last year on the team I know was a big blow to you. Why don't you just talk about what Chris brings to this team for you? At Chris's best, and obviously we're going to get there. He's an elite rebounder. Got great IQ, understands the game, knows how to get his teammates better. He plays it, he runs, he can move like a guard. But obviously being 6'10 and, and the ability he has, he can finish at the rim. Uh, all those things are within his capabilities. 
uh, we anticipate him being better than that this year. And it's going to take a little time and spin out, you know. But I think his teammates uh, around him will provide him the confidence to get back out there and play a little bit better this year. But, but we know what he's capable of. Uh, but like any person that's come off an injury, sometimes it's just getting out there and trusting it. And so he will. Uh, but, but we're talking about an elite rebounder, an elite defender, somebody that can really control the paint. And then more importantly, he's worked really hard on his jump shot so he can extend the floor a little bit. Really difficult matchup in our league. And everybody knows that. I mean, there's no secret. Chris can't hide. And so part of the, part of the, the challenge he's going to have is, is leveling up and raising his level to that consistently. Uh, and so that's what we expect of him. He knows it. It's no secret. Uh, we know that we put him in a position to, to answer the bell, as we should say, this year. And he will do that. Uh, it might not happen the first week. It might not happen next week. It might not happen the first month. But he understands how, how supportive we are of him, and, and we'll get him there. Chris, and I'm going to go back to you here. And Coach Singleton talked about in the first segment of graduating seven players last season. Um, this is a kind of new team, but you were around that team last season when you were doing your rehab. What is the difference between last year's team and this year's team? Uh, I think the big thing is everybody's just bought in. You know, everybody just wants to win. There's not a lot of egos on the team. There's not a lot of, you know, me ball. I think everyone knows uh, what we want to accomplish. And, you know, I think Coach brought in, you know, the perfect group of guys that kind of mesh well together that, you know, when things get hard can kind of come together and, you know, complete the goal. Okay, Chris, and then also, too, I mean, this is, if people don't understand or people don't know, basically Texas Wesleyan, it's... If you or a loved one have multiple daily prescriptions, knowing what to take when can be confusing. This is the Brick Street Daily Dose Packet. That's Brick Street Pharmacy owner Kimberly Abel. All of your medications are going to be in a sleeve of bubbles, telling you what time of day to take them. They're all separated out already. It's in perforated packs, and it's a tear-off system. The Brick Street Pharmacy Daily Dose Pack organizes a month's worth of prescriptions into a single, simple, easy-to-follow package. When you go check on your mom, you're not having to go into her house and back count her vials to find out if she remembered to take her medicine. Saves you an office visit, keeps everybody compliant, you know everything's going well because they're taking all their medication. The Daily Dose Pack is a Brick Street Pharmacy exclusive. It's not available from the chain pharmacy and it doesn't add a penny to the cost of your prescriptions. Brick Street Pharmacy is in Tyler's Azalea District on Rusk, a block and a half west of South Broadway. They're online at BrickStreetMedical.com. BrickStreetMedical.com perfect insurance plan can seem like a daunting task in this financial climate. Tackle the task with Mike Munn State Farm Insurance. We have a triple threat of home, auto, and life insurance policies to fit any budget. You can even cover your furry friends with pet insurance. Call 903-561-4535 or visit mikemunn.net to get started on a free quote. 903-561-4535 to get started on a free quote. Hello, I'm Mike Munn with Mike Munn State Farm, where I've been your local agent since 19... 19-
Halftime has concluded. Both teams are back onto the field, and we're ready for the third quarter of today's Sooner Athletic Conference matchup between the Sears of Texas College and the Rams, the visiting Rams of Texas Wesleyan University. His game has been all Wesleyan here at Christchurch Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium at Earl Campbell Field. The Texas College on offense has been able to get things going, including interceptions and two touchdowns and two successful two-point conversions. Let's see if they can continue that string of luck going into the third frame. The Rams won the opening toss and elected to defer, so they'll be getting this football back. The kicking things off for Texas College is going to be number 86, Tyree Lindsey. Back deep to receive for the Rams, trying to get a, a read on their numbers. Look like that's number 86 for the Rams. That's Michael Banks. Looks like they forgot to, did they forget to flip fields? Or, yeah, it looks like that's exactly what happened. The referees forgot to flip fields. I guess even the referees are not used to the, to the mugginess of today. There was a couple of showers, a light shower, here in the Rose City of Tyler, Texas, in the midway mark of the second quarter. But that shower might have lasted a total of about 25 seconds. So not that, not that much of rain, not like the rain that the DFW slash East Texas area saw last night, canceling multiple games across the region. He even canceled our scheduled broadcast last night of DeSoto versus Duncanville, one of the biggest games in the country, if not the biggest game in the country, definitely the biggest game in the state of Texas. They rescheduled. They're currently playing right now. Going to try to get a score from them as the game transpires as well. Now that we've foot fields, it seems like we're Back ready to go. Lindsay ready to boot things off. Line drive kick a squibber. Not a lot of air at all. Takes a bounce at the 30, then eventually goes out of bounds. Of course, the illegal procedure penalty is going to be called. There's not a single second ticked off of the clock. We're still sitting at 15 even remaining in this one. Coach Earl Jackson of these Texas College Steers looking to get their first win overall and in the conference. The 16th ranked Rams. Looking to continue their fantastic string of football. Not a single loss in the Sooner Athletic Conference. Their lone loss of this season was on the Antler Sports Network back on September 23rd. A loss to then-ranked 23rd St. Thomas, the Bobcats out of Florida. As the Rams trot back onto the field, looking at first and ten. New quarterback is in. That's Colin Johnson, the 6'4", 200-pound 200 200 freshman, in his first action of the ball game. We've seen Rodgers, we've seen Francis, and now Johnson getting a little bit of run. Here's his first play. It's a handoff. Bats to the outside is going to be AMJ, Ashton Mitchell Johnson. He's going to get dropped well behind the line. That's going to be a loss of around three. AMJ has been that... Middle ground running back. Of course, as we know, the running back core is spearheaded or led by Ernie Caesar, who did get a little bit of action in the second quarter, but eventually fell with an injury. Haven't seen him in this game since. As Francis on the sideline giving the signals as Johnson in at quarterback. Takes a shotgun snap, has a man, and it's caught, but not before the steers get on him almost immediately. On the tackle is Elijah Johnson. Johnson, his third tackle of the game. But either way, it's going to be a gain of three for the Rams. That brings up third down and ten. We've played a minute. 14 minutes remaining in the third quarter of play. Johnson still in at quarterback. AMJ, his back. He, Johnson has one in the slot, three wideouts total. Takes a shotgun snap, looking. Has a man across the middle. Jump catch is complete. Gain of 12, gain of 13 is going to be first down and 10 as a flag is thrown across the sideline again. Right at about the 50 in the line, Judge was the one who ended up throwing the flag. As it could be another sideline warning as the, there was an assistant coach who got tagged for flags in the second quarter twice. The line judge throwing that flag across the sideline. It is indeed a sideline warning. Here's a sideline warning called against the Steers. 
and it'll remain first and 10. 52 to 16 the score with 13 and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. Johnson trying to catch steers off guard. No dice. Flag is thrown. Fade ball downfield is incomplete. Pass was intended for TJ Curtis, but a flag was thrown after the snap. So we get the call yet again. Still first down, so it's going to be first down and five for Texas Wesleyan. Getting the infraction for the Steers was Tylen Lewis, number 93, the offensive slash defensive lineman. Ball is on the 47-yard line with 13 minutes and 10 seconds left to go in quarter number three. Johnson taking the shotgun snap, getting pressured, has a man across the sideline. It's caught, gain of six, first down, move the chains. The clock will continue to roll. On the completion from Johnson is Christopher Doyle. Doyle, his third reception of the game. As Doyle standing tall after the catch, standing at 6'3", 175 pounds. The sophomore is a definition of a tree. 12 minutes, 45 seconds left after the dual completion. Delayed Johnson over to AMJ. Mitchell Johnson turns the corner, has some space, bounced out of bounds. Did he get the first down, however? No, they're going to call him short, make it a gain of eight. Going to make it second down and two. Do they call it? No, they're going to. Yeah, they indeed did call it short. As the Rams look to the sideline, Kate Gordon, the other quarterback, four quarterbacks on roster, being Rodgers, Johnson, Francis, and the previously aforementioned Gordon. This time Johnson taking snaps for now, and a flag is thrown pre and a flag is thrown pre-snap. False start penalty. Going to get called. That's a little bit of extracurricular after the play. Five yards offside. Well, five yard foul start penalty called against the Rams. Now instead of second down and two, they're going to be faking sec They're going to be facing second down and seven. Twelve minutes remaining. Clock still rolling. Rams get the call from the sideline. The Rams in their white tops, navy bottoms, and navy hats with a gold mask going to work from the left hash. AMJ as Johnson's back to his right. Takes the shotgun snap. Hand off to AMJ. Johnson looking. Breaks up maybe a tackle or two. He's going to gain four. And now make it a third and short. AMJ, the 5'10", 205-pounder. Now this third and short situation, Doyle again back out. Lone receiver on the short side of the field. One slot receiver. Three wideouts total. Hand off to Mitchell Johnson again. He got the first down and an extra yard. Trucking a man and getting to the 30. Mitchell on the hit as we look to get another look here on that first down run via the Circle M Crawfish instant replay. AMJ uh, pretty much the Prototypical Texas Wesleyan running back, patient, but with game-breaking speed and open field. He already has a touchdown today. With 10.40, clock is still rolling, and this is the exact position Texas Wesleyan wants to be in. Run the football, run the clock, and control the rest of this game. Throw for Johnson, incomplete. Pass was intended for the Rams' T.J. Curtis. The 6-1 receiver couldn't haul it in. The, that incompletion is going to bring up second down and 10. Colin Johnson standing at 6'4", 200 pounds. Very lanky quarterback. He's not afraid to let it fly as we've seen. All the Texas Wesleyan quarterbacks that we've seen this year, both Rodgers, Johnson, and Francis respectively, once they get into the groove, they're not afraid to take risks with the football, and they definitely have the receivers to make big-time plays. 10'32", remaining in the third quarter, balls in the 30-yard line. Johnson takes the shotgun snap, hand off to Mitchell Johnson again. He gets bottled up right at the line of scrimmage. First steer to get there and to make the tackle was Brazian Ross. No flags thrown. And this is going to be third down and 10, no gain. No forward progress given. Ball is still at the 30. Ten minutes remaining in the third quarter. 
Very middle school crowd here. It's a muggy Saturday afternoon as we've now hit the 10-minute mark. After the AMJ run for no gain, it's third and 10. Johnson takes a snap, dropping back, looking to his right now, to his left. He's going to do it himself. Flag is thrown. Pass is going to be caught. But this thing might come back. On the catch from the throw from Johnson was Devontae Samuel. Because it looks like it might have been a possible, possible hold, at least from my angle. And it is indeed a holding call against the Rams. That 10-yard penalty is going to bring the Rams back to the 40. Third down and 20 after the holding call against the Rams. They got to get back to the 20-yard line. Four out wide for the Rams. AMJ to block now. Johnson, money ball, and it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. 40-yard touchdown pass to Curtis. Curtis was targeted earlier in the drive. Couldn't haul it in, but this time making good on the opportunity. With 9-13 remaining, let's take another look near the circle and crawfish instant replay. Johnson with an absolute pretty pass. Right along the numbers and caught. Texas College had the coverage in the right spot. There's an even better play by the Wesleyan receiver. Trejo winning the snap, 1-9-13. Kick from Blodgett, about as good as gold. Through the uprights and in. Our new score after the fantastic throw and catch by the Rams. Their lead continues to expand. When 9-13 remaining after the touchdown, it's Texas Wesleyan, 59, Texas College, 16. Back after this, this is Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network. Third and 20 was no problem for the Rams on that last throw. Hauled in by T.J. Curtis, the 6'1", 170-pound receiver going up top to go get it. Now our new score, Texas Wesleyan 59, Texas College 16, with 9.13 remaining in the third quarter. Kickoff is up and away, high kick, plenty of distance. The are going to take it at about the five-yard line. Going to go the other way with it. With it, it's going to be Elijah Johnson. Johnson cutting across the middle now. Has space. He's at the 20. Right in front of the Earl Campbell Field mural at the 25. And now it looks like there's a bit of a scuffle. Well, maybe not. Just a bit of a pileup. No one seems to be doing anything too much. And it looks like there was an injured ram down. It seems to be an injured ram at about the 20-yard line, and he gets treated to. We'll take a short timeout back after this. It's a steer football on ASN2. Can you announce the name of the business on this sheet? Name of the business? Mm -hmm. ah! Ooh, uh, yo, 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 Samite? Yo, Samite? Yo, Mighty Roofing. Or yo, yo, me. Yo, Mighty Roofing? Yose, Yose Might. Yose Might. Hey guys, it's Josiah with Yosemite Roofing. And we don't care what you call us, as long as you call us. As Darian Brown gets helped off of the field, walking away under his own power, hopefully the young man's okay. 8.59 remaining at quarter number three. It's been all at Texas Wesleyan here in the Rose City at Christmas Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium. Stadium built initially back in 1942. It's had some renovations, including this beautiful press box that we're in. Maximum capacity at about 8,000. Home of the Lions and Red Raiders of Tyler High and Tyler Legacy High Schools, respectively. 
Hookfin back in at quarterback. Wearing the number zero this week instead of the number two. Definitely had me fooled. Stepping up on the pocket. Let's it fly. Has a man, but just short. Had Cooper at around the 50. If Cooper would have turned around quick enough, probably could have hauled that in. It's looking back. No flags. Incompletion is going to make it second and 10. Hookfin addressing his receivers. He currently has four. Deontay Hill seems to be still on the sideline after going out earlier in this game. They're going to hand it off up the middle over to Elante Brewer. Brewer gets a gain of maybe one. And yes, they're going to give him a yard for a little bit of forward progress. With 824, clock still rolling. No, they're going to give him, no, he didn't get anything apparently. So the third and nine, check that, it's going to make it third and ten. Eight minutes, seven seconds. Hook fin, looking, spinning out, fall away, throw is incomplete. Looks like that pass might have been intended for Lindsey. But the incompletion is going to make it fourth and ten. One thing about Hookfin, not afraid, to, not afraid to run out of bounds or afraid to throw it away. He's had plenty of opportunities to do that as this game has transpired. It's now fourth and long, possible punt time for Texas College, and that is indeed what will transpire. Lindsey, the intended target on the last play, will punt things away to the Rams. Back deep to receive is Josh Morse, who already has a had a heck of a game, at least on the defensive end, was interceptions. Kick was almost blocked. Referee gets run into. Ball takes a solid roll past the 40. Now going to go the other way. If the steers will down it at the 43-yard line. And it looks like Sir Hill might have gotten a maybe the end of a glove or fingertip on that punt, forcing it not to travel as much distance. And I'm assuming Lindsey would, would have wanted it to go. 7.45 left in quarter number three. That's how the Rams again step back onto the field after a 40-yard touchdown bomb from quarterback Colin Johnson to the waiting arms of T.J. Curtis. Johnson is back in at quarterback. Also Curtis. Three receivers all at the top of your, four, at the top of your screen at the top of the formation. Mitchell Johnson, AMJ in it running back. Johnson looking to go deep, has a man, and it's just above his head. Pass was intended for Devontae Samuel. Multiple steers in coverage. Samuel looked like he was in double coverage as Jalen Jackson was there. As Johnson already has a touchdown under his belt in just his first drive as the main man on offense. Now calling a couple signals is... Mikey Lopez-Williams, the starting right guard for Texas Wesleyan. Shotka snap. They're going to hand it off to AMJ and Mitchell Johnson. Johnson's going to get to the line of scrimmage. Maybe they'll give him a yard, and indeed they do. Lewis on the hit, making it third and nine. Well, no, they did not give him forward progress again. No, the official took a step forward for a brief moment. Then stepped back, third and ten with seven minutes left to go in the third. Six minutes and 57 seconds. Ten seconds on the play clock. Johnson takes a snap looking right. Has a man caught, hit immediately, and still going. Up the sideline, bounce out of bounds is C.J. Curtis. So far, Curtis has been Johnson's favorite and so far his best target. Already has a touchdown to him. And has a big-time play to him along that sideline. Curtis took a nasty hit as he hauled it in, stayed in bounds, even got a couple extra yards after that to move the chains. It's going to be first down at 10 for Texas Wesleyan with six and a half remaining in quarter number three. Johnson with two, four receivers out wide, two in the slot. Mitchell Johnson's going to roll out, possibly run a wheel. They don't get it to him. Instead, they're going to throw it 
right in front of the numbers and to the waiting arms of Ashton Garner. Garner getting his first catch of the game. Looking, I see no flags, and they're going to call him short a yard. Second and one after the Garner catch. Now at the 14-yard line, we've crossed the six-minute mark. Johnson hands it off to Mitchell Johnson. AMJ is going to get very far, but he did get exactly what he needed. Gain of three is going to be a first down and ten for Texas Wesleyan as this drive will continue. Now at the 12-yard line. They'll have to get to the two to get a fresh set of downs. Five and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter of play. The Steers after this game have a date with the Pioneers on the road of Wayland Baptist. And after, and after this game for the Rams, they'll take a trip up to Langston as Johnson gets crushed behind the line of scrimmage. Two steers in the backfield got to him pretty much dead where he stood, but the first one to get there was Tylen Lewis. Lewis already his second TFL of this drive. Johnson dropped for a loss of 10. They're going to say he lost 10 on that one. Man, second down in 20. Well, second down in about 18. At least that's what the scoreboard reads here at Christmas Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium. Tyler Eyes D. Four state championships between their two high schools. Formerly Robert E. Lee, now Tyler Legacy with 1 and 04. Cut across the middle end zone. Touchdown, Texas Wesleyan again. Johnson with a 20 yard touchdown pass. Christopher Doyle, guess who? We said his name pretty much all afternoon long. It was only a matter of time. As Johnson took the low snap, it turned it into something great. As the Rams get back into the end zone once more and have now eclipsed the 60-point mark. As Trejo awaits a snap for Blodgett to attempt the PAT, great snap, great hole, kick way over the way through the uprights and good. The Ram onslaught continuing on offense. The Steers haven't been able to find an answer. Your new score with 428 remaining. As Texas Wesleyan, 66. Texas College, 16. Back after this, it's Steer Football on the Antler Sports Network, presented by Yosemite Roofing, continues after this timeout. Just a hair over, hair under four minutes remaining to go in the third quarter of play. Texas Wesleyan kicking, th kicking things back off to the Steers. Well, 424 remaining. Now clock is rolling. Taking the kick on the go to the outside is McClure. McClure at the 30. Cuts back across. Trying to cut back across. And a host of Rams there to bring him down. On the tackle for Texas Wesleyan was Kylan Woods. 6'1 freshman receiver getting the hit. Steers shot back out on offense. There are two touchdowns. Not only were touchdowns, but they came in, came in with two successful two-point conversions, giving us our 66-16 to 16 score. So now the Steers have an opportunity to expand on that offense, on that offensive point total, that is. 4-12, it's first and 10 from the 33-yard line for Texas College. Hookfin back in at quarterback. Two backs, a running back, and a fullback for him. A slot receiver as well. Handoff, first carry of the game. Just to try to get a number. The other way, it's a gain of five, a solid first down gain. On the run was Alante Brewer. Second down and five after the run. Steers picking up the pace on offense. They Keep, Hookfin keeps it himself, gets to the original line of scrimmage, tries to dive for an extra yard. And that's exactly my, all he might have gotten on that one. 
Do, will they even give him a yard? No, they're going to say he didn't get anywhere. No forward progress for Hookfin on the keeper. Now that brings up a third and five with three and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. Hookfin getting the call from the sideline from head coach Jarrell Jackson. Former Oklahoma Sooner. Steers facing third and five. Shotgun snap. They get it to Brewer yet again. He gets stuffed where he stands. The Rams front allowing no passage on the tandem hit was Easton Schultz and Keaton Wilson. Schultz and Wilson. How's that for a legal team? After no gain, it's going to be fourth down and five with 2.45 left to go. And it looks like the Sear offense is still on the field. Alyssa Hookfin might go for a quick pooch kick or a quick kick. They're going to go for it here. Fourth down throw is intended for Cooper and complete. Looking to try to get the well, – looking to die for the interception was Sincere Blackman. Blackman's pretty much been in coverage all game long. Still hasn't gotten that elusive interception. So that – Fourth turnover on downs is going to bring up first and ten yet again for Texas Wesleyan with 2.26 remaining in quarter number three. High school and college football complete their regular seasons on Antler Sports Network 1 and 2 next week. Next Friday we'll be staying in East Texas as the Wildcats at Big Sandy head up Highway 80 against their Highway 80 rivals, the Hawkins Hawks. Led by first-year head coach Keelan Carroll, kickoff from Lawrence Field will be at 7 p.m. on ASN1 as a scouting report game of the week. Faking the handoff is Johnson. Johnson has a man in the flat. Turns. What a juke. Gets to the outside. Still got room. Bounce out of bounds right before the 15-yard line. And, man, on the catch, it's OB Neely. Neely nearly was brought down by the by his tier defender, but not before giving a heck of a juke. Sidestep there. Gets the first down and some extra gain of 20. Move the chains first down and 10. As the Wesleyan offensive prowess continues with a minute 50 remaining in the third. Ball will be on the 18-yard line. The Rams knocking on the door of the end zone yet again. They have scored every single time they've touched the football. Johnson, handoff. Up the middle to AMJ. AMJ breaks the tackle, still pushing forward. And what the Steers thought was going to be no gain, AMJ turns into a gain of two. It's been all Colin Johnson this third quarter. As Francis started the game, Rodgers came in for a drive or two. We even saw a little Ernie Caesar come in for a drive. And it looks like a... Play is whistled dead. And a timeout is going to be called by the Steers. We'll take it with them. Back in one minute, Steer football on the Antler Sports Network continues. I want to thank Bell Shakia for being a proud sponsor of the Antler Sports Network. Back after the timeout is going to be a keeper for Johnson. Johnson gets wrestled out of bounds, but not before he gains a, about three yards on that last run, at least from, from my eye. Jalen Smith on the hit for Texas College with 40 seconds remaining. This could possibly be the last play of the third. Texas College was... Forced to take.
take a timeout to try to get a substitution in. Third and six now. It's a handoff to AMJ. He gets hit behind the line of scrimmage, and the Rams will lose a yard. And guess who it is? It's Steven Ajibola, a man that we've seen pretty much all season long spearhead this Texas College steer defense. That's the first time we've, we've heard him, heard his name or said his name all afternoon long. As now that concludes the third quarter. Only 15 minutes remain in this one. And barring a miracle, it's going to be a win for the Rams. But we still have 15 minutes to find out. And in the third, it's Texas Wesleyan 66, Texas College 16. Steer football presented by Yosemite Roofing on ASN2 continues after this on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2. Can you announce the name of the business on this? Sheet? Name of the business? Mm -hmm. ah! Ooh, uh... Yo, 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 Yosemite, Yosemite, Yosemite roofing, or Yos, Yos me, Yosemite roofing, Yose, Yose mite, Yose mite. Hey guys, it's Josiah with Yosemite Roofing, and we don't care what you call us, as long as you call us. It's the start of the fourth quarter here, at Chris, just Trinity Mother Francis Row Stadium, Texas Wrestling with a commanding lead over the Steers of Texas College, 66 to 16. We've got 15 more minutes of football left to go. Next week, our college football finale will take place here on ASN2, as it looks like we're going to have a field goal try by Daniel Trejo. No, it's going to be Blodgett instead. I thought they would have gave Trejo a try. I wouldn't be too mad at that. These are two of the most impressive kickers, at least I've seen in a very long time. It looks like this is going to be about a 32-yard field goal try. We've seen Blodgett, at least I've seen him hit from 62 in warm-ups. This could possibly be a chip shot, and it is. Field goal is good. So, at three more for Texas Wesleyan. Score, 69-16. to 16. We'll take one more short break. Back after this, Steer Football and the ASN continues after these messages. After the successful field goal from Blodgett is good. Texas College will have another shot or another opportunity to take a crack at things on offense. 14 minutes and 54 seconds remaining in the fourth. It's been all Rams after the field goal is 69 to 16. The Trejo lines back up to boot things again for the Rams. I'd like to thank our proud sponsors of Yosemite Roofing, proud sponsor of Texas College Steer broadcast on the Antler Sports Network throughout the season. High arcing kick from Trejo. The Steers will take over, will take the ball. Jackson will at about the five-yard line. Jackson has some space. Now he's on the numbers. Barrels through at the 40. Did a little bit of a head slide like he was a like it was a bit of a grind on a skateboard, but get, won't get any extra yards off of that as he did, as his knee did go down before he completed the slide. So it was going to be first down and 10. Ball will be placed. At the 40-yard line for the Steers, some of the best opening field position they've had all game long, at least from a kickoff standpoint. 14-37 remaining in the contest. Hookfin back in at quarterback. Running back now is going to be Chris Winters. Four out wide. The Rams rushing four. Shot gets snapped by Hookfin. Steps up in the pocket. Gets his shirt pulled. Gets to the outside. Now along the numbers at the 40. Crossing the 45 at midfield. Gets bounced out of bounds. But not before he gets exactly as much as he needs. Gain of 10 and about a quarter. First down and 10 for the Steers. One thing about Hookfin, he is not afraid to call his own number and make plays with his legs. And no, they're going to call him short. Just short. Second down and nine. Well, second out and one after the gain of nine. 
14 minutes and 6 seconds remaining. Hookfin now with a slot receiver. Low snap. Handoff to Winters. Winters meant where he stood by multiple steel by multiple Ram defenders. First one to get there was Keaton Schultz. Schultz the 6'3", almost 300-pound freshman. That's a big dude. No gain there on the Winters run. He's going to make it third and one. Tyree Lindsey will check back in. Now was a slot receiver on the short side of the field. Hook Finn, low shotgun snap yet again. Looking to go deep. Gets hit. Pump fakes again. He's going to keep it himself. Has the first down and looking for more. He's at the 35-30. Still in open space. Hit. No targeting call, thankfully, but the touch, possibly touchdown saving tackle by Darian Brown as Hookfin again for the steer offense, turning something out of nothing. Let's take another look as the clock rolls with our circle and crawfish instant replay. Pump fake twice. Texas Wesleyan definitely had guys close to him to try to bring him down, but is not able to get him in time. Now first and 10. Hookfin dropping back to pass. Fade ball incomplete. Incomplete pass. Looks like it was in trying to guess, we're trying to get a number here. Looks like it was intended for number 81 for the Sears. That's Aaron McClure. But in coverage, not giving McClure much room was Nick Williams. 12 minutes and 43 seconds. Clock has halted after the incompletion. Here's second and ten. The ball is on the 27-yard line for the Steers. Wesleyan sending the heat. It's a dump off. With it is Bailey. Bailey hurdles. Backflips. Ball is loose. Cooper picks it up. Hurdles another man, and it's out of bounds. Inside the 10-yard line. How's that for a play? Bailey pretty much did a complete front flipper. I don't even know what to call that. Takes a hit, front flips, almost stuck the landing. Cooper was there, right place, right time to fall back on the football. As now his coach, Jarrell Jackson and company, speaks to Hookfin and the rest of his offense. Trotting back onto the field, now looking at first and goal from the nine-yard line. Twelve minutes and counting. Clock is still rolling. The steer offense looking to get something. P looks like the snap got bobbled. Did Wesley and fall on it? Yes, they did. Falling on the football was Arian Bott, as it looks like there is a steer that was a bit slow to get up as we take another look at the snap. As Bott was pretty much there almost immediately. Looks like the snap was just a, just a simple miscue. Bott initially kicked it maybe a couple of inches forward, but then was able to fall on it very soon after. And now the, the Rams will take the football back after forcing another turnover. 11-48 remaining in the fourth quarter. First and 10. The Rams taking over on their own 11-yard line. Here's the shotgun snap. Johnson still in at quarterback. They hand it off to Mitchell Johnson. He might have lost a yard. And he did. They're going to call it second and 11. Ball will be placed at the 10-yard line. Very few times have we seen AMJ run for negative yardage. As Christopher Doyle rolls out way at the top of your screen, you can probably see the bottom of his cleats. He's right along the numbers. Here's Johnson. Johnson looking at Doyle. They target him and it's caught. Turning across the middle of the field, it's at the 40. Spins now going to go the other way at the 45. Looking to approach midfield, and he does. Bounces out of bounds right at about the 49-yard line. But forward progress is easily going to get him to the 50. Move the chains yet again for Texas Wesleyan. First down at 10. Johnson, as we take another look here, pretty much eyed Doyle the entire time. And Doyle in open field just making countless defenders miss and eating up yards. First down at 10. With 10.43 remaining. Hey, 
Seems like the dark clouds are starting to roll over yet again. Here, Chris is turning to Mother Francis Rose Stadium. We had some rain earlier in the first, and it's almost batted down. Thought it was could have been a possible interception as Johnson's pass gets hit at about the line of scrimmage intended for Doyle yet again. And that'll bring up second and 10 with 10-21 remaining. It's been all the Rams so far today. And the Rams next week as they take on Langston with a win there and a Louisiana Christian win today. As they right now currently ahead of Sag U as a flag is thrown pre-snap. The officials immediately talk it over. False start penalty called against Cannon Thomas. As I've said earlier, Louisiana Christian currently up big on Sagu. A win there and a win next week for both Texas Wesleyan and LCU will set up a Sooner Athletic Conference champ possible championship game. As run by AMJ is going to be good for a gain of three, but once again, another flag is thrown. That game between LCU and Texas Wesleyan. That's on November 11th. We'll be on ASN2. Kickoff from Crowley ISD Multipurpose Field. With myself and Jimmy the St. Christopher on the call. As a offside, well, a false start penalty was called against the Rams, and now offside penalty called against the Steers. Pretty much negates, well, offsets each other's penalties. Second and ten. Shotgun snap taken by Johnson. Johnson looking, gets hit, brought down, well behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of four. On the sack for the Steers, it's going to be number 28. Trying to get a number. They're going to credit it to Steven Ajibola. As now it's third and 15 for the Rams. Looking to get something going with 9-18 and counting in the fourth. Ball is on the 44-yard line. Big third down now for the Rams. Hand off to AMJ. Johnson is only going to gain four. And he's going to be short. Result of that play is going to be fourth and 11, no flags. And for the first time today, I believe, if I remember correctly, the Rams are going to punt this football away. It's going back deep to receive. It's going to be Derek Cooper. As Daniel Trejo will do the honors, punting this football away for Wesley, and it looks like a possible timeout called. Indeed, and the Steers will talk things over. As they take that time out, we'll take it with them. Back in one minute, this is Steer Football presented by Yosemite Roofing on ASN2. the business? Mm -hmm. ah! Ooh, uh, yo, 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 Samite? Yo, Samite? Yo, Samite roofing.
after the punt, the Rams taking the football back. Well, excuse me, the Steers taking the football back. Ball gets down at the nine-yard line. It's going to make it first and ten for Texas College with 8-18 remaining in this game. Clock starts yet again. It's going to be a handoff this time to to Brewer yet once more as Brewer's going to get a short gain. So now it looks like it's going to be a short gain. No, Brewer lost a yard. It's going to be second down and 11. Clock still rolling, 25 on the play clock. Hookfin still in at QB. He has two receivers, one of them being Cooper. They're going to hand it off to Brewer once more. Brewer gets to the original line of scrimmage and not much farther. That's going to be a gain of about one and a half. Multiple Rams on the tackle. First one to get there, at least by my eye. Looked like it was Joe Thomas. The outside linebacker there on the hit. Hookfin steps back to the football as his offense now looks at third and 10, 14 now on the play clock. Shotgun snap by Hookfin. Hookfin in the end zone, pointing up field. Trots on the sideline at the 20, bounce out of bounds, gets about a gain of 14. And that'll make it first down and 10 for the Steers. We've hit about three, well, excuse me, we've hit about six minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. After the big-time run from Hookfin, it's now first and 10, fresh set of downs for the Steers. As Paul Arroyo trots back off of the field, slowly, hopefully he's all right. Don't know if he's injured or not. It's going to be a wheel route outside to Brewer. Brewer gets tripped up on the hit yet again. It's Darian Brown. Brown, his third tackle of the game. Cooper not happy about that last play. Gain of about four is going to make it second down and six. It seems that Cooper is limping around a tad bit. Definitely not 100%. Still staying on the field, though. Second down and six with five and a half remaining. Hookfin looking, rolls out, has a couple Rams in chase and gets pushed out of bounds. On the shove was again Joe Thomas. Hookfin lost a couple of yards. He lost four yards on that one. About five, ten remaining in the fourth quarter of play. Shotgun snap now for Hookfin. Hookfin drops back, has a man wide open. Did he haul it? No, tipped incomplete. That incompletion is going to make it fourth down and 10. With 450 remaining in this game. And you have to think the sand slowly falling out of the hourglass for the Steers to have any kind of positivity on offense. Now looking at fourth and ten. Hill is still not in to kick. Instead, it's going to be Lindsey once more. High snap. Lindsey takes the kick, shanks it. Not going to go very far at all. Takes a bounce at the 35 and now rolling. And now the Rams will have amazing field position once more, first and 10 from the 40-yard line. It's going to be four minutes and 33 seconds remaining in this game. 
And I wouldn't put it past the Rams to try to waste every single second of clock that they can. It looks like Johnson is still in at quarterback for Texas Wesleyan. 15 seconds on the play clock. Johnson has three out wide, one in the slot, has AMJ as his running back. Takes a shotgun snap. They hand it off to Mitchell Johnson. Johnson pushes forward, gets five. No, check that. He's going to gain four. He reached out, thought they would have gave him the extra yard, but they don't. Going to be second down and six after the Ashton Mitchell Johnson run. It's four minutes remaining in quarter number four. Now we're inside of the three-minute mark. Johnson takes a shotgun snap, looking to go downfield, and he does. It's Christopher Doyle once more, catches, turns the corner, and slides, but not before he crosses to the 30, gets a gain of nine. Check that, a gain of eight. Move the chains first down and 10 once again for the Rams. It's been all Texas Wesleyan all game long. The Steers having, having some positive blips of offense. They had two touchdowns, including two successful two-point conversions to pair with those touchdowns, but nothing much more than that. Ball's on the 27-yard line. Bobble snap. Instead, Johnson's going to keep it himself. Turning the corner, steps out of bounds at the 15. That's exactly what he needed once more. That's going to be a gain of 12, first down and 10. Johnson, the freshman, had a pretty solid outing so far. He already has a spectacular throw and catch to T.J. Curtis back in the third quarter. And now even with that bobble snap, was able to keep the play alive and get a solid gain, move the chains, and a first down on that one. So kudos to the freshman on that play. With 2.45 left, here we go. Throw it to the outside again. It is incomplete. Pass was intended for the Rams' Caleb McKinney. We haven't seen much of McKinney either. We do remember... If any of our viewers remember last week and that win for the Rams against Wayland Baptist, McKinney with a toe tap catch along the sideline. Some still debate if that was complete or incomplete. I want to give a shout-out to the Rams SID James McBride. We had a bit of a discussion after that one. I still don't think we agree on if McKinney was able to haul that thing in or not, but who knows. Either way, it's second down and 10 after the incompletion. Shotgun snap. They get it to AMJ. Johnson bounced to the outside. Stiff arms one defender. Is it going to chase down the other? Was it going to get away from the other two? A gain of one is going to be halted tackle by Dylan Dubois. Dubois with his third tackle of the game. Result of the play is going to make it third and nine as we have officially hit the two-minute mark. The Rams need to get to the 11-yard line. We'll check that. They need to get to the 6-yard line to get a fresh set of downs and possibly knee this thing and send the Ram fans home happy. Minute 47 and counting. Clock is still rolling. Johnson takes a snap, is looking to throw, has a man in the flat incomplete. Pass was intended for Eli Chambers. The 6-1 tight end gets his first target of the game. And he can't haul it in. It looks like it's going to be field goal time yet again for the Rams. The Rams have only set up for three twice. They've only punted the ball once. And it looks like it's going to be Garrett Blodgett from 32 to try to increase this lead. Ten seconds to get it down. The Steers looking like they're going to send pretty much half of Smith County to try to block this kick. Four seconds, three seconds. The snap, Blodgett, line drive, kick. Not a lot of height at all. Not much height needed, and it's good. Blodgett's good from 32 with a minute and a half left to go. The Rams' lead continues to increase. 72-16. Back after this in 30 on the Atlas Sports Network.
Back at Chris's Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium for the remaining minute 29 of this fourth quarter of play. The Rams, after a 32-yard blotch at field goal, increased their lead now 72-16. to Tears after this one are heading out to West Texas for a date with the Wayland Baptist Pioneers. Same team, the same Pioneer team that Wesleyan defeated on our last presentation of college football on ASN2. The Rams, after... Completing the victory here in Tyler. We'll be heading up to Oklahoma to take on the other HBCU team in the conference, that being the Langston Lions. Kickoff is taken at about the 10-yard line, going the other way with it, and looking and it gets brought down at about the 16-yard line is Lindsey. As now the Steers with a minute 16 are looking to get anything, dang their hats on on offense. Well, not much time left to go on this one. With a win by Louisiana Christian over Sagu and a win here for Texas Wesleyan, the top two in the conference will stand. Setting up a possible conference championship game two weeks from now between Wesleyan and Louisiana Christian from Crowley. That game on November 11th on ASN2. Whether that be a conference championship game or not, we'll still carry that broadcast. Myself, Jerry Jones, and Jimmy the St. Christopher will be on the call. Handoff is going to be up the middle to Winters. Winters isn't going to get very far. He's going to gain two, making it second down and eight after the carry. We've hit one minute remaining in this one. As now we, we cross within one minute remaining. Hand it off yet again up the middle. Wesleyan collapsing on an early no gain. Tackle made by Tremaine Golfin. Golfin with his first tackle of the ball game. Once again, no gain. Third and eight, 25 seconds left to go. And now it looks like with 15 seconds left, that will be all she wrote. Your final score from Christmas Trinity Mother Francis, Rose Stadium and Earl Campbell Field. Texas Wesleyan continues to roll. And with a win today, they now have their longest win streak in school history. We've hit triple zeros here in the home of the Steers. Our final score, Texas Wesleyan 72 Texas College 16 as it looks like now we're maybe one a week closer from a possible conference championship on ASN2 but we still have plenty of games before that including our big game Monday as the Texas Wesleyan Rams and the TCU Horn Frogs battle it out in Sholomai Arena and the Funky Town Showdown for our first college basketball broadcast of the 2023-24 season. That game on ASN2, tipping off from at 7 p.m. Pre-game at 6 p.m., myself and Jim and the St. Christopher will be on the call, so be sure to check that game out there. But that'll be all she wrote here from Tyler. Once more, our final score, Texas Wesleyan 72, Texas College 16. For Jared Jones, Matthew Hermans, our executive producers, Nick Jordan and Justin Jackson, and the entire fantastic Antler Sports Network crew. From the HTO broadcast booth, once again, it's Jared Jones saying so long. Texas Wesleyan with a dominant win here, 72-16. Until Monday night, so long, everybody.